hunting. We shoot quail, pheasant, ducks, and uh, I like to get in and be a corporate sponsor and give away some hunts to the winners and do some great things. And we got wild boar, we got deer, wild deer, we got uh, high fences and the hogs and the deer so we can control the hunts and fishing and, and all the fine food thrills and excitement. This is a great place. Thanks for, uh, f thanks for allowing us here again. And uh, Marie, uh, hunting preserve here, a reserve, uh, a great uh, place and a great place to have GNCC. The old Camp Coker motocross track, you guys are going to get a chance to go out on that. The, the uh, home stomping grounds, the former motocross great Larry Ward right here. And, you know, uh, the, you can still see uh, the, some of the old training grounds and stuff that he used to, to uh, get himself ready for the uh, nationals and for the supercross races. Hey, I just heard too, I forgot about that, but Damon Bradshaw used to have some stomping. He used to stomp around down here on these grounds as well. Zach Bradshaw, we want to welcome you out, Damon Bradshaw's brother. Of course, uh, Zach, uh, Damon was a, uh, a former uh, great motocrosser that did some great things and had a lot of potential to do even more, believe it or not, whenever he left us and uh, retired at an early young age. But man, what a uh, great uh, place here at Camp Coker. There's a lot of history here as far as motorsports is concerned, and we are glad to be able to ride our page in it through GNCC Racing. And of course, with that, just want to let folks know as we make our way here to the uh, starting line today, uh, GNCC is a dead engine start. When the blue flag is given, all engines must shut down. This blue flag also signals 30 seconds for the start of the race. Watch the official starter, Ricky Towery, up near turn one. When he puts his left arm straight out, that will signal 10 seconds for the start. And at this point, all mechanics must step behind the riders. The green flag that signals the start of the race will be thrown anywhere between 8 to 12 seconds following the 10-second call. Do not start your engine before the green flag is thrown. ATV riders, at this time, please make sure your tether cord is connected. Tether cords must be hooked up. As far as scoring is concerned, transponder scoring is the official scoring system of GNCC Racing. And when you arrive at the finish area at the completion of your lap, when you arrive there at the scoring zone at the finish line, you must stop. The official may wipe your helmet first if it is muddy, but wait until they release you to go. Finish up the race. It's at the finish line, not at the scoring zone, so do not race into the scoring zone. The area between the finish line and the scoring zone is a no-passing zone. Checkpoints. There are as many as three checkpoints in addition to the main scoring zone on the course. These points will be marked with caution signs and double arrows. You do not have to stop at checkpoints, but you cannot pass or race through checkpoints. Okay. These are no passing zones, and you must proceed through with caution. Also, uh, as far as the track is or pitting is concerned, the XC1 and XC2 riders are required to fuel in their pits with the exception that if a rider runs completely out of fuel, he may obtain fuel outside his designated pro pit area sufficient only enough to allow him to get to his pit area to refuel. All other riders may pit anywhere along the track with the exception of the scoring zone. There is no pitting or signaling within the scoring zone. And folks, remember, pit vehicles are not permitted for crews, riders, or fans. The track. Now, the course is marked with arrows, ribbons, and tape. X's will signal dangers. So please use caution in these areas as they are difficult sections of the track. A W means wrong way. You either gotten off course or you're heading off course. Turn around and return to the track where you left it. You must stay on the marked course. Now, if you encounter a bottleneck, you may get, or a la lapped rider, I should say, give him notice you're behind him. Have patience and give the rider time to safely get out of the way. If you are a lapped rider, be courteous and move over. And if you hear a rider come up fast behind you and yell they're not in your class, then be courteous and let him by. This will especially apply for pro riders coming up on left riders. And now at this time, ladies and gentlemen, to get you geared up for today's inaugural Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. One of our co-trail bosses out here gonna give us some uh, track description and what you folks have to look forward to. And of course, we introduce to you, Mr. Ryan Eccles. Thanks, Rodney. Well, we have about 11 mile course for you guys today. You're gonna uh, take off from the start here and you'll go right into woods at the one. From there, you have some nice trails out to the out towards the two, and you'll get to the motocross track. Guys, just ride safe out there, and you guys stay in the confines of the motocross track. You can't cut the corners out there. And out there, you'll also have the FMF power point through the rhythm section. And from there, you'll make your way around some little grass track and across the bridge over towards the three. And from the three, you'll make your way just around towards the four and out towards the five. Out towards the five, you guys will have a lot of fresh stuff right there. The morning didn't run through there. And from there, you'll work your way up towards the six, and then up towards the seven. From the seven, right after that, you can jump out in a big grass track. It'll be a lot of fun, a lot of good passing opportunities out there. You go from the seven out to the eight, and then you'll drop back in the woods right before the nine. You work your way around to the 10. You got a little pine section, some woods, uh, 
before you jump back out in another big field section over towards the 11. After the 11, you guys will drop back down and work your way back around some track side into the finish. Good luck and have fun. You're absolutely right. It is fun. I had the opportunity to ride the track last night, and wow, you guys are in store for a great time. I also want to take this opportunity to remind you folks, safety first. Remember, GNCC racing, like all motorsports, can be dangerous. Racers, now that you've had an opportunity to inspect the course, have heard the race procedures and a description. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave oh, the land Good afternoon and welcome everyone here at Camp Coker and across the world at racertv.com as we welcome you to this, the fifth round of America's premier off-road racing championship, the Amsoil GNCC Series presented by Maxis, an AMA national championship. And of course, this is the CST Tires Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. And as we get set to roll into today's racing action, of course, we welcome you out on behalf of our co sponsors here and uh, uh, sponsors, as well as uh, the many great folks that make it all possible, and all of our great hosts that we have here. Megawatt Matt Watson going to be joining us here shortly. We're also, Fred Andrews, former motor motorcycle champion here in the GNCC racing world. And of course, uh, we welcome you here to beautiful, sunshiny South Carolina, where today we are on the Marie. Hunting Preserve, 
the former grounds of the old Camp Coker Motocross Park and, of course, the stomping grounds of Larry Ward and Damon Bradshaw, former motocross greats. And today we carve lines through the motocross track, and through the hills, the fields, and through the trees here at Camp Coker for this Bullet GNCC. And as we get set to meet our starting lineup, you can turn your attention to the first turn. He rolls to the line first today. He rides aboard the number one with three wins already this season, hailing from Rogers, Ohio. Your defending champion on an NFAB Ampro Maxis Yamaha, backed by LSR, MXP, and MSR, Walker Fowler. Rolling to the line second today, folks. He rides aboard the number five, nearly capturing his first pro win two weeks ago at the Big Buck GNCC. They call him the Bidwell Bullet from Bidwell, Ohio, on a coastal racing MSR Maxis back Yamaha, Bryson Neal. Rolling to the line third today, fresh off his first win of 2016. He is a CST-sponsored rider. He hails from West Union, West Virginia on the CST LSR Induction Solutions, Derisi SG Tire Blocks Backed Honda, Adam McGill. Rolling to the line next today, he rides aboard the number four. He is the GNCC's winningest rider of all time with 73 wins, six GNCC championships, hailing from Sunbury, Ohio on a Maxxis Fly Racing MZL back Suzuki, Chris Borage. Rolling to the line next aboard the number 733 from Edinburgh, Pennsylvania on an NFAB and Pro Yamaha, former XC2 Pro-Am champion, the freight, the cold train, Cole Richardson. Rolling to the line next aboard the number 14. He hails from Akron, Ohio on a BNR Maxis Moose Racing backed Yamaha, Josh Merritt. Rolling to the line next. He rides aboard the number three. Currently ranked seventh in points out of Casca, Pennsylvania on the JMR ATV Riders.com backed Honda, the Cobra, Jared McClure. Rolling to the line next today, he rides aboard the number 11. He is ranked eighth in points out of Manchester, Maryland on a show hauler Canyon Motorsports GBC backed Honda, LW Landon Wolf. Rolling to the line next, he rides aboard the number 10, a career that spans three decades of GNCC racing. Hailing from Aurora, Ohio, on a GBC HMF Fly Racing Yamaha, Johnny G, Johnny Gallagher. Rolling to the line next today, he is 10th in points. Riding aboard the number nine from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania, on a Precision Axis Pro Graphics back Maxis Yamaha, Jay Shadron. And last, and certainly not least, he rides aboard the number 816 from Grain Valley, Missouri, on a Shockworks Motorsports Exit RSFX GBC Tires backed Honda, Tucker Wyatt. And that, ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineup for this CST Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. As they fire him up, Ricky Tower, he lets them know they're going to have just a couple minutes, actually less than two minutes before we'll be seeing that green flag waving here in the sands of South Carolina. That's right, folks. We are in a very sandy portion of this state and only about an hour and a half from the, the sands of Myrtle Beach, believe it or not. But I'll tell you, what a great uh, facility, a beautiful uh, facility that we have uh, made our way into many many ponds lots of swimming and fishing and great things going on here talk about zip line a little bit of everything is what this uh, particular facility has to offer the general 
visitor, but when they come here during this particular weekend, they have the opportunity to bear witness the inaugural running of this Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. You know, with an inaugural event, a first time appearance, it makes you wonder sometimes, will we have a first time winner here today? There are several riders across the front row as we're one minute, one minute away from going GNCC racing. There are several riders across this front row out here today that each and every one of these guys that uh, are hoping to be able to maybe capture their first ever overall win and at a first time event a first time win that is certainly something to recognize and something to be especially proud about one rider that i myself personally am watching i'm going to be keeping an eye on johnny g and cc himself i'd like to see things turn around and him pull it off but i know a lot of eyes are as well on the number five of Bryson Eels. We shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, guys. We are less than 30 seconds away from going racing here today in South Carolina for the very first time here in these uh, beautiful Society Hills soils of South Carolina. As we turn our attention up to Ricky Tallery right now, and uh, the hearts begin to pound. I gotta ask you, race fans, are you ready to go GNCC racing? Oh, come on. I know we can do a lot better than that. I'm going to ask you one more time. This is our inaugural event right here at this Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. So I'm going to ask you, are you ready to go GNCC racing? Ten seconds. And row number one will be off and rolling at our CST Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. Wow, the horsepower fires off the starting line. $250 in our All Balls Whole Shot Award coming up right now. And it is the number 521 CST rider of Adam McGill picking up where he left off only a couple of weeks ago up front. And it's Chris Borich back in the number two spot. Didn't quite catch where Walker Fowler was, but this is going to be a great show today, folks. XC2 Pro-Am, Marty Christofferson, Randy Hamilton, Greg Covert, James Green, Kenny Schick, Levi Cohen, Wes Kinsley, Cody Collier, Bryson Hobbs, Matthew Lindo, Ryan Thompson, Duck Lloyd, Dwight Pollard, Wesley Wolf, Michael Lancaster, and Braden Henthorne all ready to roll in 10 seconds. And the XC2 Pro-Am are off and rolling in a dead silence to that display of horsepower into the first turn. Now second turn, it is the 303. That is Matthew Lindo out of Muscatine, Iowa, grabbing the whole shot out there. And he is uh, riding on that Honda, 25-year-old rider. Vet A, 28-plus class. Coming up next, Tommy Koontz, or AJ Koontz. We got Wes Stone, Todd Muscala, the Marble Man here with us. Kenneth Kelly, Jeffrey Pickens, Luke Reeves, Nicholas Carnelli, Kevin Patterson, Walter Schumacher, Joey Margaria, and Dustin Hendershot. Ready to roll in 10 seconds. Coming up next, after these vet A's, whoa, what we got? Jeff Pickens, old Jave, no, the number 98. Yep, that's Jeff Pickens out of Shamoka, Pennsylvania. GBC Tires, GBC Tires sponsor, College A class. Coming up next, Devin Feehan, Drew Landers, Nick Reldy, Hunter Hart, Logan Wagaman, Weston Scott, Brandon Eichert, Peyton Atkins, Braden Schick, Seth Wilson, Corey Silverthorne, Wyatt Wilkin, Tyler Wares, Shane Kittle, and Tanner Walker. And our special 10-second uh, guest starter today, Mr. Henry Marie, our landowner. And we get ready to roll in. 10 seconds. And Henry Marie, thank you very much. Doing a great job there with the 10 seconds as we round that first turn now, try to get it all sorted out. Oh, that is. 553, Corey Silverthorne grabbing the early lead. By the way, I want to say, Congratulations, our XC2 Pro-Am class picked up an extra 100 bucks from All Balls Racing there a few moments ago. The whole shot award winner there. Junior A 28 2 Plus coming up. 
Stevie Covert, also Nathan Hornacek, Matthew King, Cody Wolford, Nicholas Mastrangelo. We got Travis Austin, Jake Price, James Mauger, Trevor Payne, Brett Cover, J.D. Brown, Michael McAvoy, Jeff Miller, Noah Landis, Dustin Piggott, Josh Konacek, and Sam Ho in 10 seconds. Five thirty-three, getting a good jump off the line. Jeff Miller from Summersville, West Virginia. Can he carry it through to turn two? He will. And Miller gets the early lead with a 29. And Stevie Covert out of Ithaca, New York, right there on his rear wheel. Should say wheels. And that real grab, but rear grab bar there. Senior AB 38 plus. Jeff Range, Eugene Siemens, Eugene Siemens, Lane Coyle, Charles Baker, Mark Batson, Rusty Repass, Andy Cooper. Back out here with us, ready to go. Senior AB class in 10 seconds. And they're off. And our early lead, 7.04. Rusty repass out of Mooresville, North Carolina, grabbing that early lead out there. As we move from our senior A, Bs, now into our B portion of the program, the Vet B, 30-plus, Jeremy Gouchard, Brian Locke, Alan Tuttle, Philip Thayer, Jason Diller, Charles Rogers, also William Craig, Lyle Morrison, Chris Bennett, Corey Blinkowitz, 10 seconds. John Colvin, Kevin Wright, Dale Batson, David Rutter, and Matt Miller. And they're off. Wow. Jamming through the gears into that first turn right now. Getting it all sorted out. It's going to be 524. That is John Colvin from St. Mary's, West Virginia on a Colvin Farms Marietta Motors backed Honda. College B, 16 to 21 year olds coming up next. Scott Pearson, Donald Boylan, Morgan Flannery, Joseph Yerkson, Shane Pitzer, Michael Anderson, Bobby Duker, Caleb Hagan, Travis Spencer, Frank Egress, Chandler Burner, Tyler Swindle, Justin Keller, Corey Vandeliner, Eli Kiger, and Ethan Fitro, as well as Jamie Wells. Ten seconds. And the College B. 16 to 21 year olds are off and rolling, rounding that first turn now. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, mercy. 78 machine getting tossed right there. Scott Pearson out of Windsor, New York, on a Hauser Racing DB brakes machine. Had that early. I'm not sure who ended up with that. I think it might have been Kiger as he got together with the 808 right there. And Kiger got out on the longer end of the stick on that one. Junior B, 22 plus class. Brian Felicki, Chris Ballou, Evan Temko, David Kite, Charles Dawson, Matthew Scott, Jake Callahan, Doug Morris, Justin Farrell, Chris Wittenberger, and Ryan Bovis. Ten seconds. And they're off our final row, firing off into the woods here. The Camp Coker Bullet GNCC in full swing as the number 61 machine of uh, Brian Felicki out of Poland, Ohio, grabs the early lead in this one. And that, my friends, does it. That puts well over 120 riders back into the woods as we uh, roll our way through this inaugural running of the CST Tires Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. And folks, stick around. We've got a whole lot more to come. I tell you, a lot of surprises I think are in store for us, so stick around. GNCC Live continues right after this. When it comes to guarding your engine, Amsoil offers the next level performance enthusiast demand. Amsoil provides 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard, extending the life of pistons and cams. Give the vehicle you love the above and beyond protection it deserves. Amsoil, devoted to protection.
Max's tires. CST tires. You smell it, you feel it, you can right. taste it in the air. Speed, man. Full wide open. Blast. I don't really like high school too much. Too bookie, too take notes, learn this, and that's it. Yeah, wow, take that full size motorcycle. The feeling of taking them apart every day, putting them back together. Woo! Can't explain it. Everything I learned applies to now. Seeing your motorcycle that you put together right around the track at 180 miles an hour. Oh, definitely rewarding. My name is Mike. My school's Wyotech. Get on the fast track to a career turn pro at Wyatech. I've been with Liat for a lot of years, and I know the dedication they have for, for safety. When they told me they were coming out with a helmet, I signed right up. Absolutely been a dominant force so far in uh, the series. Guess what? He wrecks in the first turn last week, gets up dead last, and ends up getting a fifth. So uh, really throws a uh, kink in the works, no doubt about it. Yep, and here you go. We're right, right now we're watching the uh, leaders go by. You know, we had uh, Adam McGillan first, um, Chris Borch in second, and Walker Fowler in third. You know, you can see this nice fresh woods right here. You know, nobody's been through these woods. These guys are racing on virgin territory, which is uh, really unusual for what we do. And, you know, they're all close, so it's still anybody's kind of race. Yeah, it's anybody's kind of race. And so far, Fred, the only thing we've had were some uh, youth bikes and some amateur quads and 4x4 pros. So what's going to happen to this track now, it's going to be under pro-level conditions. These guys are going to hit it at a different pace. They're going to use different lines. And what's going to happen now, this, this track is going to take on a whole new face than we've seen so far this weekend. Yeah, you know, each lap these guys go around, the track's going to get a little bit more broken, a little bit more broken. You know, we've got a lot of vegetation up on top. You know, we've got these leaves, and we've got some new vegetation coming up. So that stuff's going to start to get burning, and, you know, the track's going to get a little bit more burdened as these guys go. But right now, every one of these guys is so excited to be racing on some virgin soil, you know, ripping things up, throwing logs out of the way. And, uh, you know, you're not going to find a guy that's not happy to be out there right now. That's for sure. You're not going to find uh, anybody that's not happy to be out there. Rodney Tomlin joining the broadcast now. Mega Watt's going to step out and about. We'll be getting some updates from him here in just a moment. Fred Andrews and I had the opportunity to ride this track last night, and it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and it's also got some tight areas in it as well. It's open in some areas, but very tight in some of those wooded areas, and uh, all virgin terrain, just like you said. It is an absolute uh, a joy to be able to be out there in those woods today. Yeah, you know, these guys are really in for a good treat here at the new venue. And, you know, last race at Big Buck, like I said, we had some really, really good racing going on. And I don't expect anything different today. 
Uh, we got a little bit more of a motocross track here, which we didn't have at the last venue, so there could be a little some excitement going on there. I walked around a little myself, and uh, you know the Maury place here is really cool. It's uh, got some li big lakes and big grass fields in it. It's got some sand, which right here you can't really tell the sand for the dirt, but there's yeah. definitely some good sand here. It is, and, and, and this is your kind of place because not only is it a great place to ride uh, bikes and ATVs, Fred, but it's also a hunting reserve. And uh, they do everything from quail to deer to wild boar, uh, probably about anything you could think of hunting they do right here on this property. Yeah, you know, I saw that on the way in. I saw the uh, hunting venues, stuff they got going on. And, you know, actually the trails that we're cutting in here are really going to work out for the deer because now we've got some actual new paths they can be walking up and down. And as these guys are riding around, they're probably going by some deer stands and stuff out there. So, you know, oh, yeah. this is some there's, excitement going on. There's a couple deer stands out there. I even chased a couple of rabbits down the trail last night. Uh, we're about 15 minutes now into this race. Uh, we just got started. We're watching out here near the six-mile marker. Our leaders have already come through. I know uh, pulling the early lead there, the 521, picking up that $250 hole shot award today. Adam McGill picking up where he left off a couple of weeks ago. What I saw also going into the woods was Chris Borich in that number two position. As we pick things up out here at the seven mile marker, big, big sandy section. They can get some speed out here. That is uh, Adam McGill leading out front. And look at this. He's already got himself uh, a pretty good lead, a mast out there. And, that's pretty impressive, especially knowing how tight those woods are and how tough it is to get through some of those tight sections. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if Chris Forge had a little bit of trouble out there somewhere or not, but Adam McGill is really, really getting after it right now. You know, he's going out in there in those big dust berms. He's kicking up some dust, trying to, you know, block the vision of Chris Borch as he's going along. But Adam McGill, you know, the last race, he put in an awesome race. He raced hard all the way to the finish, and he's able to make that last lap pass going, coming to the finish line to win that thing. So... Adam McGill's really got a full head of steam going on this weekend. He most certainly does, and uh, there's a lot of guys behind him that's trying to pick up the steam and momentum. I know Walker Fowler's trying to redeem himself from that uh, stellar fifth-place ride. I mean, he had a horrible first-turn crash route back to uh, fifth place, salvaged uh, what he could out of that day, and uh, things uh, worked out very well for him as far as the championship points race is concerned. Bryson Neal, uh, a very... Uh, respectable performance out of that young man the Bidwell Bullet as we like to call him he is here at the Camp Coker Bullet hoping to be able to if, since he didn't get his win in South Carolina two weeks ago maybe today in South Carolina and of course I know uh, Bryson Neal was uh, pretty pumped up about uh, coming into today's race oh Walker yeah Walker was Walker was uh, actually, oh, yeah, we had a chance to talk to Walker. That's what they're trying to tell me. I forgot. You remember uh, last week uh, he got together with Adam McGill. It looked like uh, Walker maybe going to get the whole shot in the early lead in that one. Well, they got together, and things didn't work out so well. So we did have a chance to catch up with Walker and find out his perspective on that. This race, we, we got a real good jump off the line, this NFAB Impro Yamaha. Uh, has been starting really well. Moto Experts has done a lot of uh, cam testing with our webcam, so we definitely got this thing firing good. We went into the first corner just barely ahead of Adam. I think he actually had a better jump, but I kind of out, I held the throttle on a little longer and, and uh, tried to get to his outside, and he pushed me even wider, and uh, I was right on the edge of where the track was watered and, and kind of loose still, and that was good. We were sliding together at the same angle. And then uh, all of a sudden, I, I got traction. I drove right underneath his foot peg, and uh, he doesn't run Nerf bars. So his foot peg went right over top of my front tire, and then once his rear tire clipped my front, it just sent the bike in a real quick little spiral. So uh, after that, I mean, literally, it was just like, poof, you know, off I went. So definitely stunk, but, you know, we got up and tried to recover the best we could. It definitely doesn't help my focus any when, you know, an accident like that happens. But um, honestly, when I got up, I was kind of not fired up. It wasn't anyone's fault. But I was like, all right, I got to go. You know, it's time to make up some ground. And I caught everybody the first lap. And then midway through the second lap when, uh, when I forget who got out front, but the pace picked up. And uh, I was a little beat up. And the machine was uh, not 100%. And I, I couldn't go any faster. So they kind of just dropped me. I was running seventh. And uh Chris Borge had a crash that put me to sixth, and uh, Jay Shadron had a bike problem that put me into fifth place. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even made those positions up. I just wasn't able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Walker Fowler looking like he's ready for a tough man contest or an Atlas uh, contest. Man, he's all bulked up and everything, looking good. And uh, 
We'll see where he's at on the trail here in just a moment. We're 19 minutes into this Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. And, well, the 521 of Adam McGill out uh, having some good times out there leading this thing as we are back out here at the uh, seven mile marker again. Uh, you see those big open field sections. Uh, there's a couple different areas of track that we actually get a chance to see right here. They come kind of close together, but uh, uh, we'll see them a couple different times in this neck of the woods, so to speak. But uh, right now we are waiting patiently here at the finish line, near the finish line, to find out who is and how this thing's going to be shaping up. We're only at mile marker seven. Our leaders may be pushing close to eight or nine at this particular point, Fred, but. So they'll be coming out at the 11 mile marker here in just a moment, which I think is really still part of that big field section, just coming out of a wood section and the other side of the field, if truth be told, Fred. Yeah, Ronnie, right. and like, like we were saying about listening to Walker Fowler's interview, even though that crash really didn't seem like much on TV, it sure was a big get off for him. And, you know, getting yourself back up and getting going like he did, you know, when you get back up, you got your adrenaline going. You really think you're ready to go. But, you know, once you get going, he realized that, you know, he was a little bit banged up and his bike wasn't 100%. So I think he was really did a smart race to minimize his damage there. You know, he kind of caught up the leaders, but he wasn't 100%. His bike wasn't 100%. Instead of throwing the whole thing away, he just kind of settled in and got what he could get that day. And the fifth place, you know, was really good for the situation he was in because a crash like that, you know, that could have ended his day. But, you know, that shows, you know, the sign of a champion, you – on your exactly. best day, you just gotta, you just gotta get the best you can get that day, and that's exactly what did, he did. You know, he didn't give up. He just kept on pushing forward, and he knew it wasn't his day, but he just tried to get as many points as he could. Well, I tell you, Walker Fowler of old may have pushed the envelope too much and threw that way that day away completely. But uh, salvaging a fifth place position finish was a uh, very smart ride by that young man, no doubt about it. And uh, right now we are. Checking out uh, various shots from out on the woods there. You can see the soils uh, look a lot, a lot of sand. We see some lo uh, a lot of roots in that too, Fred. So, you know, they're digging down, and you wonder how this soil is going to break down. Well, obviously in the woods, there's a lot of pine trees and a lot of softwoods and stuff out there. So you know there's a lot of root systems. So that's one thing that they're going to have to uh, contend with today. Yeah, you know, right now these guys are going around their first lap, and it's going to be pretty smooth for them. They're going to think, oh, this is, this is cool. This is really great. But the second time around, this virgin soil, all this dust and all this dirt and sand is going to get blown off, and these roots are going to start exposing themselves. So it's going to get rougher and rougher as the day goes along. Well, there's David Kripe and also uh, Ryan Eccles. David Kripe, a.k.a. Hollywood, does a lot of different things with the trail. We'll hear him doing updates and stuff. Ryan Eccles, one of our new trail bosses here in the 2016 championship season. As we see our lead trail boss, Mr. Jeff Russell, out watching over in the field section right there. I'm not sure if he's watching the field or if he's thinking, man, I should be out there fishing on that big old pond because, you know, <laughs> Jeff's a big fisherman. But, you know, that's the cool thing about this place. We've got so much different scenery here. We've got those big ponds and lakes and big grass fields. And it's really cool to see this type of venue where we can have a camera. We can see a whole bunch of different areas for everybody on TV because usually, you know, we're stuck in a spot where it's a great position, but the camera can't really pan out and see different things. So right now we can see a lot of different areas yeah. and even these grass fields, you can see by looking at them, it looks like they got little stutters in them. And that's, yeah. these flat grass fields really aren't flat, Rodney. They're going to get rougher and rougher as the day goes on. These big sand berms are going to get bigger and bigger. And as you can see out of McGill, the first lap, he's already trying to take advantage of the big sand berms. He's out there bouncing off them, trying to get all the dust he can. So the guy's behind him can't see so he can get out there further and further ahead of him well though this uh, camp coker uh, is uh, the first time gncc event they actually held an atv motocross national back about 1993 johnny gallagher was telling me that he actually raced that here whenever he was a youth racer this uh, facility is a top notch uh, you know we talk about keep talking about it. it's got lodging options swimming fishing rope swim seeing swing and zip lining uh, marie marie's sportsman preserve yeah, this is an uh, upland game preserve, and it's uh, a favorite to many, especially if you love quail hunting, duck hunting, pheasant hunting, and other outdoor activities. And the Camp Coker Motorsports Park was once located on the property and hosted many races, such as AMA District 29 events and area qualifiers for the AMA Amateur National Motocross Championship at Loretta Lens. This facility has been shut down, but the track is still completely intact. It's got a few trees growing through it, but it's still completely intact. And uh, we want to say thanks to Henry and Hank Marie, uh, they're the owners here, and uh, Henry and Hank, uh, just like Henry and Hank at the Big Bucks. So we got a couple of Henry and Hanks here at uh, this other South Carolina <laughs> location here 
Oh, man, I tell you, we hit the home run. We got two great South Carolina venues, and uh, Adam McGill was enjoying them both, man. He won over at Big Buck, and look at him go there, man. He looks like a man on fire. I mean, that, if, if it wasn't so dry out, that dust coming up, I would swear that's a smoke screen from how fast that boy is burning up those CST tires across this soil in South Carolina. <laughs> you know, Adam McGill, he, you know, he's got himself a little bit of def deficit right now. He's 89 points. Walker Fowler's got 106, so... Adam McGill knows he's got to get on the gas. He's got to try to make up as many points as he can, as quick as he can, to get himself even closer to Walker Fowler. And, you know, right now he's doing what he needs to do. He's trying to get that big old lead, trying to just show these guys that he's for real, that last week, you know, two weeks ago wasn't a fluke. You know, he's, he's out there doing what Adam McGill does best. He's got the start, and he is running. Well, we start doing the math on that. That would be 10, 17 points, all that separates him. And just like the win that he took at Big Buck a couple of weeks ago, that chipped away a few points. A win here today could chip away a few more points. And if he's able to do that, then voila, we got ourselves a really exciting championship again. But we can't count out Bryson Neal either yet. I mean, that youngster's only 14 points behind Walker Fowler right now. And uh, Walker's got three race wins to his credit right now. But uh, this is going to be exciting to see what uh, round five is going to bring for all these guys because I have a feeling, man, I, I said it earlier, I'm expecting the unexpected to happen, and maybe it's not so unexpected now that I said that, but uh, I think that this venue is going to offer up some surprises. Yeah, Ren, this right here is coming into the finish line right here. You can see they put a little bit of water down, it looks like, to keep the dust down, but it's got a really, those berms from the earlier class are really big and tall, and they look like they flatten out, flatten them out a little bit, and it got really choppy and rough right there, sir. Right now, we're just waiting to see if Adam McGill, when he comes through here, if he's actually put any time on him or if his lead's any bigger or any smaller. We'll have to get a time on when they get closer. But um, Have I not been paying any attention, or have we not seen second place yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, no, we haven't, Rodney. And a little story about Hank Maria. I wanted to get in here while we're still waiting for Adam McGill to come. When I was a young guy and I was racing the 100cc class, Adam, um, Adam McGill, Hank, <laughs> Hank Marie was at a big race, which was Ponca City back in the day, and he was on K KX65s, and they didn't even have them in America yet, and he was probably five or six years old, and I was waiting in line to uh, get into the event, and here comes this little kid in this big, huge motorhome driving it in, and it was Hank Murray. <laughs> you know, he's riding, his, he's riding a 65cc bike, and he's driving this big old motorhome into the event. It's well, pretty set funny. Well, standard back then even, didn't he? <laughs> Man, yeah. they got, got big things going on here right now. There's Adam McGill with big things, like a big lead going on here after lap number one. There is second place finally coming in. Is that the Yamaha of Walker Fowler? Let's uh, check this as they get a little close. Yes, it is. Fowler into the number two spot. The, uh, we'll try to get the official time deficit on that for you in just a moment as soon as our uh, timing and scoring updates here. There is, that's Chris Borch in the number three position. A little bit farther back behind Fowler, but wow, good start for Chris. He got off in the woods in second place. He's lost a little bit of time to the front runners right now, but Borch is in good position right now to make things happen. Is that the cold train right there? Was that 733 we've seen coming through? Uh, that was uh, sure looked like him. Richardson in the fourth place position. Bryce and I think Neal. that was Bryce Neal coming by there. And it looked like, it looked like his uh, pit crew guy up there was actually giving him a water bottle or something, Rodney, as they were coming out of the, out of the uh, finish line right there. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me a bit. It's hot out there today, probably looking somewhere in the neighborhood of about close to 80 degrees at this particular point. It's uh, muggy, and there's a lot of humidity in the air today. Uh, I know a lot of folks were, you know, uh, expecting the sunshine and the hot temperatures, but Wow. The humidity is where it's at today here in South Carolina. So our riders now making their way through the pope pits right now. Nobody seems to be stopping. No senses of urgency right now. We've seen uh, Papa Chris, uh, Papa Borch, Joe Borch down there giving Chris the uh, thumbs up as they came through there just a few moments ago. So everybody seems to be settling in the pace. There is, uh, well, he was giving somebody a thumbs up. I guess that might have been him going through there. But regardless, we got uh, good things going on in the pits. Nice, steady flow. Uh, looks like everybody's fallen into place right now, and I got to be uh, honest with you. I'm a little bit surprised that things aren't a little tighter than what they are, um, because of how tight the trails were last night. Like I, like I said earlier, though, a lot of that could have gotten blown out with that morning race today. So there's a lot more lines available. But I think again, as this race wears on, probably about lap three, that might be whenever we see whether or not that, that is going to take any toll on the race day or not today. Yeah, Ron, and today out there, you know, these guys, we've never been here before, so these guys, it's really important to them to get through this first lap without any 
trouble. You know, right. they're just trying to get through this first lap, learn the track a little, and then as the second lap comes around, they're going to know where they're going, so they're going to be able to go a little bit faster and faster in different spots. But I'm a little bit surprised that Adam McGill's actually got a big lead stretched out this early into the race, and the other guys are kind of the same way. Walker Fowler was in second, so he had a little bit of a gap there, and it seems like these guys are a little bit more separated than I would expect from a brand new venue like this. I would have thought they'd kind of be a little train going along right now, and everybody would be, oh, you know, nose to tail. Whoa! I just got the updated results of what's going on right now. That can't be right. He's got Josh Merritt as class leader, and he got Wesley Wolf overall right now. So I don't know what's going on with that. You know, Rodney, though, you know, that could be happening because right now the leaders are learning the track. And like you said, Wesley Wolf and Josh Merritt and those guys, those guys have, are seeing the guys ahead of them. So they're actually pulling them ahead. You know, the, the leaders aren't going as fast, but the XC2 guys are going faster. You know, we see that in the bike class a fair amount the first lap where the XC2 guys are wow. actually leading on adjusted time sometimes. So yes, they are. They're that could happen. But, you know, I expect it to go the other way this next lap. You know, yeah. Adam McGill will know where he's going, so he'll be going a little bit faster. Well, that might, that might take into account what I was talking about, the track being uh, kind of, well, a little tight. It might have been a little slow on that first lap, but it's got Merritt and Wyatt as your first place. Johnny Gallagher in third. Yeah, but so. you're right. You know, the <laughs> I don't think that's quite right. I think they must have them in the wrong class or something because uh, right there we see Adam McGill, your leader, Walker Fowler in second. 16 seconds back is Chris Borch in third. In fourth, Cole Train, Cole Richardson, Bryson Neal rounds out your top five. Sneaky Snake, Jared McClure in the sixth place. Seventh place, Jay Shadron. Landon Wolf is your seventh place position. And here comes Adam uh, McGill right now on the motocross track. Coming through is. the whoops, taking them two at a time. That's old uh, Damon Bradshaw, Larry Ward, and those boys' old stomping grounds, their old training grounds right there. You see the Camp Coker motocross track district. What was it, 26, a lot of races, and ATV motocross national back in the uh, early 1990s. And, I wouldn't mind seeing another ATV National down here again, man. This would be a perfect uh, marriage, I think, with the ATV Motocross. But by the way, speaking of ATV Motocross, we're going to be live next weekend at the Ironman ATV Motocross National in Indiana. That is the same place of the Ironman GNCC, but the big moto track, that's what's going to be used out there. So be sure and uh, tune in next week to racertv.com also and be watching social media all week. And, all of our websites and stuff for the information that will be coming up soon. Uh, the Bullet GNCC will be here tomorrow again next, uh, or to, uh, well, tomorrow, the Bullet, and then uh, Saturday, May 7th, the Ironman, and we'll be back with more GNCC racing in a couple weeks after that. May 14th, we'll be at the Limestone 100 over in Indiana. Out here on the Moto Track, look at this. Chris Borch is closed in. Is that Walker Fowler ahead of him right now on this moto track? No, no, Rodney. Walker Fowler's are already gone by. I believe okay, that's, that's Cole a Yamaha ride. I was getting all excited there for a second. I was looking at some other paperwork, and wow, I thought, man, Chris Boards had really laid down the hammer there for a moment. <laughs> no, it was Adam McGill was in the lead. Walker Fowler was in second. Looks like the gap was about the same for those two guys. And then it was Cole Richardson, and you're correct. Chris Borch has closed up on Cole Richardson. He's putting a little bit oh, of heat so on him. Cole's gotten around him now then. So that's, that's a change. Uh, just a few moments ago, we saw that Chris Borch was ahead of Cole by 6.3 seconds. Now Borch has dropped to the number four spot. So, wow, big change has taken place there, it looks like. Well, that's a cool double jump right there. Right? I don't know who that was, but somebody on the quad there doubled that, and it was really – I mean, that's a good jump for a quad guy for a – G and C quad guy. guy. Yeah. Woods guy. Because we're not supposed sure. to be able to jump and stuff, but these guys are getting after it on this motocross track, making it look really easy. Look at that. That right there. That's history right there. Camp Coker history, American motocross history right here we're seeing. And to be able to revive it like this with GNCC Racing, man, I'm getting super excited about that. And uh, look at that. That old announcer's tower. I can see this place coming back to life. I really can. Yeah, Rodney, for sure. There's no doubt. Everything's here. We just need to, uh, you know, with us coming here, I think it's going to, yeah, like you said, rejuvenate everything. And like you said, if they get an ATV National here, heck, how about a, how about a pro motocross national here? I thought here? that too, but I wasn't going to throw that out <laughs> just yet. But this is a perfect place for it. Yeah. Down in the south, been looking for this location. Plenty of parking. Plenty of parking. Hour and a half. Beautiful place. Beautiful place. Hour and a half from uh, Daytona Beach. Uh, you got Darlington. They run the Darlington uh, Motor Speedway just 25 minutes from here. So, I mean, there's a good population base there. This is a new home for motorsports, I think. I'd like to see a lot more of it in the future. We'll see. We'll keep our fingers crossed out uh, here at the mile number two as we uh, check out the beauty of this facility itself this is uh, the, well the camera crew the racer tv crew they had an opportunity to go out on friday get a few shots and uh, check out uh, just the lady the, the leisure laid back lifestyle of what this uh, marie hunting reserve has to offer the old camp coker motocross facility 
And here's our leader, Adam McGill, again. Now he's still getting after it, coming out into one of the wood sections here, getting up into to the one of the big dusty berms, heading back off from the woods. And we should see Walker Fowler in second place here. And, yep, there's Walker Fowler. Doesn't look like he's really closing up on him at all. And Walker Fowler reaching up and giving himself a little tug on his uh, roll off to get some clear vision because, you know, it doesn't look that dusty out there. So, and here comes uh, Cole Richardson looks like he's in third place wow. coming through the woods. That's and look how rough that thing's getting, Rodney. It's just getting rougher yeah. and rougher. That answers out the questions there. that I had. I had a lot of questions of what this track was going to break down like. It's oh. getting rough just as loud as yeah. I thought it would. Starting to whoop up a little bit. You see, you see some chop up here across some of these hills, but I'm sure there'll be uh, some whoops. There'll be some choppy stuff. There'll be a little bit of everything I think this track's going to offer up. Yeah, you know, like you said, these roots are going to start to come out. The track's going to get rougher and rougher as the day goes on. And right now they're coming through a nice little sandy section out into the open. There's the 11 of LW, Land and Wolf. I'll tell you, uh, this kid's been seeing some uh, some increases in things this year. His, uh, his overall finishes have been better, and uh, we'll be keeping an eye out for him to see how his progression goes here today. Right now... <laughs> They got Josh Merritt still listed on live results as your leader. I will say one thing. Now, Josh, let's see, really snuck by us out there. Not out front, but he set himself up for his best season finish. Uh, you know, uh, he's ranked 14th from last year. He's currently sit six, six, sit sixth in points. As soon as we know where he is, there he is right there, Josh Merritt. So he's running probably about, what, seventh, seventh place, I believe, is what we're looking at there. So, man, uh, wow, you got to – Get a big tip of the hat to uh, Akron, Ohio's Josh Merritt. And his sister, Kara Merritt, is also a top uh, WXC racer out there. So that's pretty cool to see the family spirit uh, working so well and so strong. Both riders seem to be coming on strong here in 2016. And that's something you really see a lot in GNCC racing, Rodney, is the family. You know, it's yeah. a real family sport. Your dad might race, you might race, your sister might race. So you never, you know, well, it, it keeps everybody together. You come here, you camp out, and you have a good time. And it's, yeah. you know, that's what... What's That's what of? GNCC racing is all about. It's a family sport. It is. And, and Jay Shadron is another one of those. His sister Cheyenne just started racing again. But I recall uh, only a handful of years ago, five, six years ago, dad, mom, brother, and sister, all four raced the GNCCs on every Saturday. They all raced ATVs. And that was just uh, Can you imagine amazing. the stories on the way home? <laughs> oh, I can imagine. <laughs> Never There's Wesley ending. Wolf, by the way, the 741. He was the uh, race winner in the XC2 Pro-Am class. Two weeks ago, uh, he picked up a pro sport win in ATV National Motocross Championship racing, the Pro-X ATV Motocross National Championship presented by CST Tires. Uh, took a sixth, I think, in the Pro-Am class. He actually won two weeks before that in the Pro-Am class. So uh, Wesley's doing pretty good. There's the 16 machine. Randy Hamilton, I believe, is out there with us right now. The 16 also running top in that uh, XC2 Pro class. And... I'm telling you, uh, we need to get on to our, not on to, but we need to get word to our technical dude, Mr. Dan Reinhardt. We have no timing and scoring happening here. This is uh, not working right. All right, so we're going to go to the overall right now and see what the overall it says. It's still saying Wesley Wolf's in the overall, so we're going to go with that at least for the moment because Wesley Wolf's lap time, a 26.56. Oh, my gosh. That's like a minute and 20 seconds faster. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. See, that's all. That's all. They got, wow. That's timing and scoring. And don't be going by timing and scoring right now, folks. I really don't think that's the case. Uh, that's the overall I'm looking at right there. Now, that could be the case for the overall, but we got Merritt and, and Wyatt and Johnny Gallagher all running one, two, and three. We know Adam McGill is your leader. So, right now, while you're watching GNCC, we want to know how do you GNCC Live hashtag a photo and post it on Instagram to hashtag GNCC Live. And uh, we'll be uh, popping those up on the screen here in a little bit. And we'll also pick a, uh, well, uh, one of our favorites and uh, give them a Moto Tees event souvenir shirt. So if you'd like to pick up a Moto Tees event souvenir shirt featuring Adam McGill on it, well, Instagram a photo of yourself, how you uh, GNCC Live. How are you watching GNCC today? We want to know. And uh, everybody else wants to know also. Well, I'll tell you, this part of the track right here, I'm going to tell you, Fred, last night when I rode through it, it was all covered in grass. There were, uh, the, actually, there were pine trees, little saplings sticking up out of the ground 
That's all gotten cleared out. That looks like a well-groomed roller section at any motocross track right now. Yeah, sure, sure does, Rodney. And you can see too. You know, you don't have to double every one of these jumps like that. These guys are nice. They're nice big rollers, and these guys are having fun just even rolling with. You know, if they're not up to the challenge and doubling out of them, that that big giant sand berm that they're coming out of up there looks looks like so much fun to me. I can just imagine hitting that. And here comes Adam McGill right now coming through the wood section, and we'll see if Walker Fowler's putting any catching up any on him and yeah it was nine seconds at the finish man it sure doesn't look like looks like those no. guys are staying a little bit closer maybe even al mcgill might even put a second or two on yeah him. that's looking a little more than 10 seconds right now to me so this a little over maybe 12 or so seconds i didn't get a time on that but uh 12 seconds is what we're getting the uh, word on officially there from uh our production crew here back there the number three spots cold train uh, good news for him there's chris borge back in the number four spot He's right on his rear grab bar right there. He's looking over his shoulder, too, because fifth place not far behind right now. That number five was Bryce O'Neill, and that's number three. That's Jared McClure. The Cobra strikes out here in these uh, sandy soils and through these trees and gets around Bryce O'Neill. So Neil drops now to the number six spot. Here comes the number nine, Jay Shadron, one of the riders we talked about. His sister races there in the uh, morning race at seventh place. Eighth place, Landon Wolf aboard the number 11. We check back to the ninth place position out here. You know, Rodney, notice that seems to be like a, a good spot for every, everyone to look over their shoulder. Every one of them guys that comes around this turn just gives himself a little look, whether the, the track just makes that little hook right there and makes it easier or not. But these guys are... These guys are checking things out, see who's behind them out yeah, there. Yeah, this is going to be one of the last races here this uh, spring. I think they'll be able to do that, man. Look how th thick the foliage is starting to get on the trees. We've been racing with literally or virtually no leaves on the trees, and now we've got the leaves on the trees. It's starting to thicken up, but they can still see through that enough to see how far back folks are. Uh, back on the motocross track, actually, no, this is near the end of the uh this the is finish. coming to the finish line. Yeah, the 12 mile marker. This is the chicane coming to the finish. There's the 14 of Josh Merritt we were talking about. Currently ranked sixth this year after coming in 14th. So uh, he's on the verge of quite possibly his best season yet. Yeah, he hasn't landed on the podium yet, and he hasn't been a strong top five contender. But I'm telling you, he's inching his way right toward that right now. And that's good when you can start recognizing those kinds of progressions in riders. Yeah, you know, this track made us actually fit everything he's been looking for. He could have got the, that good start he's been waiting for all year long. You know, he's been up there, and he's been just waiting for waiting for this opportunity, and it's here right now. We'll see if he can carry it all the way through to the finish. Time will tell. And speaking of time, approaching 42 minutes now into the race here. Still out here watching. Uh, well, we're back to the two-mile marker watching the uh, – roller section there will be uh, at the finish line with the completion of lap two coming up here shortly we'll get things a little more dialed in as far as how things are working in this uh, overall in a few minutes it looks like adam mcgill coming through here through some of the center sections that with a little bit of field a little bit of woods and yep yeah. here he comes right now man is that thing getting rough out there that quad is bouncing all around but it doesn't seem to be affecting adam much he's just Man, Keeps Adam, on flooring it. I got to talk to Adam. I'm going to tell you something about Adam. Uh, first few rounds, he seemed a little bit uh, uptight. I'm not going to lie, he did. Uh, Big Buck, he was a lot more looser. Uh, this round, I've never. Uh, this is Adam McGill from last year when he was winning a lot and challenging for the championship with Walker Fowler and stuff. Uh, Adam McGill is back to himself. He said, I went back to my setup from last year. All the changes I made in the offseason – we're back. We scrapped it. We went back to uh, last year's settings. He says, as long as Dad does his job like he did last year, we should be good. Yeah, that's exactly what, you know, he's exactly well, right. He won last year on these settings. There's no reason why he can't win this year. Or, you know, maybe he was just lacking a little bit of confidence because right now he is on fire. I think that Man. confidence in Adam McGill is back 100%. I think you're right. And, again, I, I would say you, he's on fire. And that's uh, the dust coming up behind those dust plumes. Uh, they're nearly uh, smoke plumes because, yeah, he is on fire right now. Burning up this track, like we said, with those CST tires. He's the CST poster child. <laughs> the tires. You know, and last year, too, you know, when he caught on fire, he made up a lot of points, and he got there to finish, and it was it was a close battle. So if oh, these yeah. guys could be in real trouble, if Adam McGill is riding like he was at the end of last year and catching fire and making up these points on well, Walker Fowler, on 
He's on it. Looks like uh, Chris Borch might be in trouble. Is that Borch right ahead? No, of Borch went by. Borch is okay. right behind uh, Cole Richardson, but he actually put a little bit of time Cole Richardson put on is Chris that Borch. Another, that's a yellow. Is that a yellow Yamaha? No, that might have been Shadron, actually. Yeah, I think it was Shadron. Oh, uh, well, we'll see you a little bit. I that, that yellow keeps throwing me off. I keep thinking Chris Borch, but we do have a couple other riders on yellow machines. They, I think, are Yamahas. I think that's what... Um, Jay Shadron is riding as uh, one of those uh, 50th anniversary uh, Yamahas that they got out there. 60th, sorry. 50, 60. You know when you get that old, what's, what's, you know, what's 10 years? Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey my age, it makes a difference. Uh, Everybody all sensitive about their age. Now I get it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's only one old yeller there. There is only one old yeller, and Chris Borch is riding him right now. <laughs> Let's see if he can get old Yeller to the front of the pack. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not sure for certain, but I heard that Chris Borch got off pretty good last race. Then when yeah. he was up front, he was up there with those guys, yeah. and he got off something that, you know, we never saw on TV. All we saw was him just kind of falling back a little bit. So, he, That's you know, what, yeah, he probably he, crashed, banged himself up a little bit. The bike wasn't quite right. And at the speeds these guys go, if something's just a little bit off, it's a lot. It is, and you know, he said that uh, it all started, you know, when we seen him go into the pits and he started doing those suspension changes, he said it started, he, he had to get off before that, and it was a rough one. He said that the bike, he said everything was okay, and they just kind of went away on him, you know. Uh, the, he thought he slowed things down. He thought, well, that's a mistake, slowing the suspension down, so they tried to speed it back up. It was just too much uh, ground loss at that particular point, a little roughed up and stuff for him to really do a whole lot with it. So he held on to a respectable, uh, I think, what, sixth place finish, if memory serves me correct. And uh, back out here again today. Uh, amazingly, you'd think it'd be easy to just go back to the old settings you had. And I don't know if he kept a log of his old settings or not. A lot of racers do. You'd think that, okay, we'll just go back and we'll do these settings right here. But the way Chris is talking, he keeps testing and he keeps, t keeps tuning like he's not trying to rely on old settings. He's not trying to – either he doesn't know what his old settings were, he isn't relying on them, or he's trying something new. I don't well, know I think, Ronnie, it's, it's the speed's different, too. He may have those old settings and may put them in there, but it's not the same pace as what it was two years ago when he rode Old Yeller. These guys are going a lot faster than what he was back then. So he's pretty much got to take that setting, and he's got to retest what he has to make and, new settings. And he's pretty optimistic about it. I mean, you know, it's basically like he's starting at ground zero. You know, whenever you see a champion, the most winning rider of all time with 73 wins, somebody that's used to winning, somebody that's used to winning championships, you'd think they'd be all, their butt would be all tied up in a knot and everything right now, and he'd be all freaked out and everything. But he's not. Not one bit. He's really calm. He's really cool. He's really collected. He understands. I would spend a year and a half off of that machine. I totally adapted my riding style, my mindset, my training, everything to a totally different program. Now I've got to get back to this program. Yeah, you know, and he knows he's a, uh, that's what made him so many championships wins that he had. You know, he just knows that he keeps on trying at it. He's eventually going to get that right set up, and he's going to be back on top of the box. He's just going to keep digging away, keep digging away. He's not a quitter. He's not giving up because he's not winning. Unlike he, still, he still loves the sport. He still likes riding the quad, so that's keeping him going. Yeah, Winning's but he's just not a, benefit. a quitter, and he don't give up, unlike his cronies, Borich Bandits. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get that jab in there because we were talking about that during the pre-race report today. I asked him, I said, where's your, where's the Borch Bandits at? And he said, ah, they're fair weather fans. <laughs> 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 but reality, they live up uh, closer to the north. Yeah, once we get up further yeah, up yeah. towards Pennsylvania, Ohio area, there's going to be plenty of Borch Bandits out there. You know, we've had a, we've had another <laughs> race, and this is pretty far from Pennsylvania, I know it was nine hours for me. It's probably nine or ten hours from him. So, you know, some people got to work. But when we get back up north, there'll be a lot more of the Borge Bandits coming out. And, you know, when we get back up that way, he's probably going to have this thing a lot figured out a little bit more. So, you know, get those guys a little better show. No doubt about that. I have to agree. By the way, Chris Borge uh, raced a Wynoa race last weekend. He said one of the first local races he's raced for quite some time. He won. He said he felt good. He said uh, things were starting to feel back to more normal than what they have. He felt more comfortable on the bike. So those are all good positive signs working through this uh, season here. We're round five, man, almost a halfway I point. I can't believe it either. It just blows me away that this is round five already. And uh, we still, I mean, it seems, I mean, look at the calendar. We still got a long way to go. But round wise, I mean, it's getting down to the nitty gritty. These guys are going to have to start performing at uh, top levels and consistently in order to get this thing uh, shaped up. 
Trying to look at C overall right now. We still haven't uh, checked in, I don't think, with two laps complete for those guys. So that's it'll straighten up, I think, after that uh, second lap of racing. But right now it's got Wesley Wolf leading the overall. And he's coming off of some pretty good rides, a great ride down in, uh, well, over at Union at the Big Buck GNCC two weeks ago. A week before that, he won the Pro-Am class in ATV motocross. He won the Pro Sport class this past weekend and took six in the Pro-Am class. And he's coming out here. Trying to win the XC2 Pro M class and GNCC for a second co second consecutive race, and if this is right, he's leading the overall. What? I, hey, I said it, I'm, and I'm not going. I know it's still early in the race, but again, don't be surprised today. I'm just telling you, don't be surprised at anything that happens to happen. Yeah, you know, like I said earlier, I, I think these these guys could be. Fred this could be right. <laughs> <laughs> Fred don't seem to have the same feeling that I got. For no, I, th I think Adam McGill, Walker Fowler, and those guys, I think they're here for real. You know, I think Adam McGill's on a mission today. After, last, after that last race, he got that sweet taste of winning because there's nothing like winning, you know, and he's got that taste back yeah. in his mouth. And he's out front right now. He's got a full head of steam. He's got clear traffic because, you know, we've got a nice long venue here. And I just think Adam McGill's just he, he's just going to keep on – it, pushing and pushing and pushing. You yeah. know, is Walker Fowler going to lay yeah. back and give up? There ain't no way no way in heck that's going to happen either. So no. at this gas stop, I think they're going to come in, get some gas, get a little bit of pep talk, and, you know, it's going to be racing for two hours straight. There's no yeah. that, that, cruising you're around. Right. You're right. And, and the one thing that we got to point out is the conditioning level at uh, which Walker Fowler is riding at. And also, I, you can't take away anything of Adam McGill, his conditioning. I, I think Adam probably looks as well fit as he has ever looked. I mean, he looked good last year, but this year looks even more comfortable in what he's carrying around, I think. No, yeah, you know, every one of these guys is in really, really good shape. Yeah. And talking about Adam McGill, I still go back to the spot where he's going, yeah, I think I'm going to have to get a job this week. And <laughs> it's like, man, he's, he's about ready to give up and quit. And bam, he goes out and wins a race. So he's, <laughs> that must have been he likes playing him. with you. <laughs> that, he must not like the idea of getting a real job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's for sure. I can't blame him. I don't want a real job either. What do you think I'm here for? I love my life. Everybody says, Rodney, you got a dream job. No, I got a great job that I get to watch everybody live their dreams out in. That's and here comes talking. Adam McGill right now through another one of the great open sections here through the grassy fields and in these big sandy berms. And, man, he's just looking forward. You don't see him looking around and worrying about the guy behind him. <laughs> pulling a little wheelie. He's one wheel on the out there. Watch him. He's just scooting along, wheeling on, getting on the one side. Looking good, man. I mean, that is uh, as good a Adam McGill if I, as I have ever seen. He is in that zone today. The, the and I guess right now it looks like 10 seconds, Rodney, is my guess, is uh, how far Adam McGill is ahead of Walker Fowler right now. So those two are staying pretty consistent. Walker Fowler might just be staying back just enough to stay out of the dust from Adam McGill. But these two guys are really putting on a good show out front. Uh, yeah. We still haven't seen third place come around yet, which was Cole Richardson at the – as last we saw, it looks like those two That's leaders are actually up. pulling I, away. I am going to say this. That and there's, gap see there, Cole seconds. Richardson got out Ooh. over top of that big old sand burn. Oh, boy, oh, it looks like he might path. be having trouble. He, he was saying something to that guy, and that's weird. Chris Borch just let him go back by. Bro, I, Chris Borch is one of those guys, he likes to have fun. I mean, he gets into a pace. <laughs> I mean, he does. I mean, that's one thing you can say about Chris. I mean, he's a six-time champion, 73 wins. And at this point in his career, you know, you'd be thinking he'd be, like, just totally panicked to try to get back to the front of the pack. He's bringing a whole different approach to it. He's bringing the fun back into it. And, you know, I haven't seen Chris Borch really have a lot of fun throughout his entire program. It's a whole new uh, – I mean, it's always been business. I mean, he's always had mortal enemies. It's either been Bill Balance, Taylor Kaiser, Walker Fowler, somebody he has had uh, to be mortal enemies with. He's not in that position right now. He doesn't have anything to defend. No, I think he's having fun out there for sure, you know, and maybe he just feels like he needs to be behind a guy and he's not flowing very well and he thinks Cole Richardson's going good and he just wants to go in behind him and, you know, not have the pressure on him because when you're leading the guys behind you, you've got all the pressure as far as picking the line and you got the heat on you, so he's just letting uh, Cole Richardson do it. Rodney, I can add this right now. When I look at Borsch and, and we talk about the wins, he's not going to get less wins this season. He's already accomplished a ton in his career, <laughs> okay? And when he's comfortable and having fun, that's when he's most dangerous. And uh, you say no sense of urgency right now, or he, he, he let, uh, let somebody back by. You know what? The guy's got nothing to lose and everything to gain right now. He's proven so much over the last few years. He's solidified his legacy. And you know what? If he turns things around and he adds something else to the book right now, that's icing on the cake. Amen. I agree with you on that. So, uh, 
You couldn't. I couldn't put it any better myself, man. That, that was a good way way to look at that. There is a way to look at uh, the 521 up front and flying as he rolls through this 12 mile marker and uh, completion of lap number two. We'll get a better bird's eye view of what's going on as far as gaps and uh, just exactly how overall adjustments are going. You know, you mentioned it looked like um, it, it looked like Adam riding on one wheel, and I looked at you and I said, you know, that's that's part of Adam's style. When he's further back on the bike, when he's really picking up the pace, that's when he's most relaxed. That's typical uh, Adam McGill style back there with the gas on, and that's how he's riding today. 54-23 into this one now, and we have, I believe now, uh, two laps complete here. Here comes Cole Richardson into the finish line with Chris Borch right on his tail. So that'd, be sec that'd be third and fourth place right here, Rodney. 27-24.3 lap time for Adam McGill. And he scanned in at right at 2 o'clock, about 20 seconds after uh, 2 o'clock. So um, we are well Hap in the A two-lap board is out right now, Rodney. Yep. So, uh, so I'd be looking for these guys to all to come into the pit area this time, all of them to get fuel. And this is where I expect things to really start to get a little bit uh, fancy out there on the trail, I think. You know, Fred mentioned Cole Richardson just a second ago. Rodney, it's amazing. You and I talked to his parents yesterday, and I know you talked to him in the pre-race report today. They were telling us that guy's riding 60 miles a day or so on a road bike, man. And that's getting back up to speed. That's getting back into shape that this guy's riding 60 miles a day right now. And... Uh, to be able to put that in, to be able to be that comfortable, you got to you got to figure he's back on track and and picking up speed. Well, the bacteria. Now he has Crohn's disease. There's Crohn's right. disease. There's no doubt about that. And the, and the ailment that he thought that he had was uh, blockage due to that it ended up being a um, a bacteria, kind of like he says, it's like elderly people oftentimes get in their uh, in their intestines and things like that, which has the same symptoms as Crohn's disease. But um, he's very fortunate that that's not what it was. He says. It kind of stinks because it really was tough to get through that, but he's happy that, you know, he, he doesn't have to do anything really special. Once he gets that out of his system, just keep monitoring, maintaining his, his uh, current uh, regiment, and, uh, you know, and hopefully the, the Crohn's will stay away. But, man, he's last race he was 80%. He ended up finishing fourth, almost took a podium. I asked him today. So what are you feeling today? You just kind of chuckled at me. I was, I was like, 80%, man, you were killing him last week. I hate to see what 100% is, but uh, he just kind of chuckled, and uh, we'll see what uh, he percentage he's back in the day. Yeah, you know, Cole Richardson's putting a lot of time on his road bike. That just shows you the drive that the young man has. You know, he wants to be back up on top, and he knows that if he's not in shape, he's not going to get there. So he's doing everything he can to get himself back in shape and trying to get back on top of the podium or get on the podium box at all. There you go, out uh, in the pits now, I believe, uh, watching the JMR pits of uh, Jerry McClure, and there's the 11, is that the 11 there we're watching? I think it's number 14. 14, that's that's Merritt there, okay, sorry about that, so Josh Merritt, where's he at? Let's see, we got McGill, we got Fowler, we got Richardson, here's the gap, 9.9, .9, call it 10 seconds between first and second, another 35, 34.9 seconds back to Cole Richardson in in the third place position, 1.9 seconds. We'll call it two seconds between sec uh, third and fourth. That's back to Borch. Jerry McClure, another four seconds back in fifth. Bryson Neal, right there with him. It was a ha well, four tenths of a second off the pace of McClure. Remember, McClure got around Neal on that lap. Those guys have been going at it pretty good. Landon Wolf, OLW in seventh. Jay Shadron is eighth. Uh, looks like uh, Josh Merritt in the number nine spot aboard the 14. And Tucker Wyatt rounds out the top ten. Should be. We'll see what happens here in a moment. Johnny Gallagher also back there. We'll see how things are going for the veteran Johnny Gallagher. So Johnny told me this morning, he says, I got a, I got an advantage over everybody here. He said, I raced this track back in 1993. <laughs> he was voted ATV <laughs> motocross. That was funny. Johnny's, Johnny's got a great sense of humor and, uh, and uh, great memory too, man. I mean, he, he always brings up some good stuff. But there we see uh, the Merritt Pitts. They gas and go no senses of urgency there beautiful looking uh, pit road here at uh, camp coker bullet gncc so right now fred you've been a part of teams in the past you know what it's like to be standing there just kind of waiting i mean what's what's going on with the pit crews over there right now i mean what do they do mainly during this time yeah, just sit there and, you know, have a nice cold drink and sit around. No, these guys are, it's actually way more nervous 
nervous and nerve-wracking that being in the pit area than it is on the track because you never know where your guy is at unless you know they're fortunate enough for us to say, hey, here like this, here comes uh, Adam McGill here through the motocross section. You know, we can tell these guys their pit crew. He looks like he's man, it looks like he's actually put a little bit of time on Walker Fowler, or maybe it's still around 10 or 11 seconds. But you know, the pit crew right now, they're they're a ball of nerves. They're waiting for you to come around. They never know where you're at. They just got to make sure they got your gas ready, got your goggles, and got your gloves, or and a cold drink for when you come in. Because a race like today, these guys only pit one time. So if the two lap board comes out, you know your guy's going to be pitting. So you give him some some fuel, give him a cold drink, and give him a little pep talk. You know, tell him where he's at, or just give him anything just to get him keep him going. An element to add into today's race again, the heat. Uh, we are looking at rather humid conditions under warm conditions. Uh, probably, what, mid to upper 70s right now, pushing close to 80. But like Yeah, yeah. Megawatt says it feels like 102. Not quite that hot, but it is rather stuffy out there. And there goes Cole Richardson by in third place. Right now, here comes uh, Chris Borch in fourth. It looks like Cole Richardson's put a little bit of time on Chris Borch, but also looks like behind Chris Borch, and these guys have all have all tightened up. So Chris Borch looks like he's got a fight on his hand for fourth place. And now these guys are coming to this big double jump here at the finish line, and Cole Richardson jumps it with no problem. Next, we're waiting for Chris Borch. Oh, Chris Borch doesn't jump it. And I'm not sure who that was in fifth, but he jumped it with no problem. Looks like old Yeller's got a lot of heat on him right now. Oh, man, does he ever uh, back in the number five spot. I think that's Jared McClure, old sneaky snake, the Cobra, rearing his uh, ugly head once again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to wonder if that snake's going to scare old Yeller and get it get it moving out there, Chad. I got to wonder. Back about say, <laughs> what was it you said, old Yeller? Best in show. He's looking more, he's looking right now just to try to get uh, away from that snake, is what I'm thinking, man. Jerry McClure is all over him right now. Bryce Neal back to six. Here, here's an interesting thing that I think, man, look at the difference of what we're seeing. I mean, with some of the riders, Bryce Neal in particular, coming off such a big, big race today to, I'm not going to say struggling, but not re riding in accordance to what we've seen. Bryce Neal ride so far this year. Yeah, you know, Bryce Neal's always come from behind and worked his way to the front. Well, this time he started in the front, and it almost seems like he's going backwards, whether they changed something on his bike or this track's really not suiting him, but it's not the same Bryce Neal we've seen in the last, you know, earlier in the year. Here comes Adam McGill right now through one of the wood sections, and, man, is it getting choppy and rough, and... Oh, he's starting to look over his shoulder a little bit, so I don't know if Walker, he feels Walker Fowler, or he can hear him coming, but it seems like he might be a little bit nervous, and there's Walker Fowler, so it looks like Walker Fowler might be putting a big push on right now, Rodney. I think he might be right. Eight seconds now separating those two. It was some ten seconds yep. now, so we shaved off a couple of, of seconds there. Uh, again, the heat, I mentioned that a moment ago for a reason. We, we talk about the conditioning of these guys. They're all very well conditioned. Um, but even in the Florida over the winter, I don't think that they saw warm temperatures. And, and certainly not since then have they had to really push a whole lot in those types of temperatures. So this is going to be, this could be a, a, a big factor in today's race as far as wearing these guys down, I would think. It sure is, Rodney. And you can see how rough these track is getting. Look at these guys bounce around this quad. You think it's easy going around there, but it's not. These guys are getting all beat wow. up and bounced up. And there's Jared McClure. He's really putting a push on. So... We got Chris Borich, Jared Mercalier, and it looks like Bryce and Neal, all three of those guys are right together fighting over that fourth, fourth and fifth place position trying to get Chris Borich. So we've got, you know, we've got some races on our hand right now. Yeah, we do. Walker Fowler's gained a few seconds on Adam McGill, so he knows he's going to be getting the white flag this lap. So if he's going to make something happen, he's got to get even closer than what he is right now. So this white flag lap, these guys are really going to be pushing. Well, after the first lap of racing on adjusted times in the overall, Wesley Wolf was your overall leader, according to those reports. Right now, we look at it, Wesley is ninth overall. I think he finished 10th overall at the last round. That seems about, about right right there. Uh, Wesley is leading by, oh my gosh, 47 seconds over Randy Hamilton in second place. Cody Collier, another 12 seconds back. He's got a minute over one of his biggest competitors in the class in Cody Collier. Randy Hamilton is a big and huge competitor. That's uh, Jared McClure's teammate also. So, wow, man, almost 50 seconds over everybody. 
And Wesley is not looking back, man. He said he found his stride a couple of weeks ago in at Big Buck. And uh, he says, I, I, was, I was searching. I couldn't find it. I could search and search. He said, well, he said it finally came to me there at uh, Big Buck. And I'm looking forward to today. That's about the way he said. And by golly, I can see why he's looking forward to today. Look what he's doing out there. Yeah, Ronnie, that's for sure. He's definitely carrying that momentum forward into this event. And, uh, yeah, he's right now he's in ninth place. So, you know, he's really caught up a lot. He's had a lot of XC1 guys, two pass to get up in that position. But with the time adjustment, it being ninth place is really good for him this weekend. And we'll see how he comes out at the finish line here. And like we talked about earlier about this kind of track, you know, the foliage is starting to grow, so the woods are starting to thicken up. And it's just cool seeing – you know, this time of the year, though, everything's getting green, everything's growing in this track here. We're really fortunate to come to such a beautiful s facility. Hey, Amen. I can't wait to come back here and go hunting this fall. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've oh. seen a lot of places where quail are going to be oh, hiding. Yeah. I'm gonna, <laughs> we're going to have to talk and Hank and Henry and say, hey, you know what? We need to give us a little announcer's hunt going on there here. There you go. We'll get me and you, Johnny G, Megawatt, uh, and anybody else. We're going hunting. <laughs> hey, how do you GNCC Live? Instagram a photo of you and how you're watching GNCC Live right now for a chance to win a Moto Tees event t-shirt courtesy of Moto Tees. You can check them out online at mototees.com. By the way, uh, Adam McGill featured on the event t-shirt for today's uh, ATV race. So, hey, you never know, man. He might end up winning this race, being on the event t-shirt. That would be a pretty cool prize to win, I think. So get those photos in. Hashtag GNCC Live on Instagram. And also don't forget about uh, uh, Twitter contest, putting predictions. P uh, pick your top three to could win $250 NAMS oil product. Uh, don't forget, coming up uh, later today, we've got the UTV race. That'll be about 4.30 this afternoon. Tomorrow, we'll be back live uh, right here from the Bullet uh, with our two-wheel racing action. Next Saturday, uh, we'll be at the uh, Ironman Raceway. We're home of the Ironman GNCC, of course. We'll be having ATV National Motocross Championship Racing, the Pro X Racing Parts, ATV Motocross Nationals, presented by CST Tires. And also, uh, Saturday, May 14th, two weeks from today, basically, uh, is going to be the Limestone 100. We're going to head back over there. You know, Rodney, you mentioned Pro X and the Limestone. You know, I'm excited to see those guys back in the game. You know, they've been such long-standing industry players. They've supported everybody from Jeremy McGrath to uh, Scott Summer, all kinds of people over the years. Yeah. And to watch these guys come back in, uh, kudos to Pro X. Amen on that. I'm glad to see them as a part of uh, the racing world once again. Fred, look at this, an hour and six and a half minutes into this. Where's it? Yeah, no incidents. Where, I mean, where's the time going today? Everybody's just, everybody's just running. I mean, what I said earlier, expect the unexpected. I think everybody took me to heart and said, whoop, it's just uh, don't do anything silly out here. And everybody's just out riding their own race and uh, not pushing the envelope anywhere. And you know, Rodney, this is a great type of race to watch. It's a fun race because yeah. these guys are simply going in the pits, getting a splash of gas, getting a drink, maybe some goggles, maybe not today. We're not having, oh, he's got bent bars or he bent the bike. Or this, that. Man, everybody has no excuses today. We're racing heads up, buddy. It is. You're absolutely right. Very good point. And there goes Adam McGill by right now out here Ooh. in the woods. and. Walker Fowler is closing in. Four seconds. And right now. That's six seconds closer than he was when they yep. came through the finish line there some six miles ago. So he's been gaining the, a second a mile on average is what we're looking at right there. So now you got to be wondering, is Adam McGill going as fast as he can go and Walker Fowler's catching up? Or is Adam McGill just kind of catching a breath because right now that's not what you want to be doing you got to no. be you got to be pushing to the end because walker fowler's coming and he ain't stopping for you he's going to be trying to get by so well, adam mcgill's got to pick his pace back up if he kind of slowed down to get a second breath or not and here comes cole richardson and he's coming by right now and chris boards is back on his rear wheel right now yeah fred fred i have to think just before the white flag you know these guys just took the two lap card and I, I can't help but feel that that's probably not a strategy to slow up right now. I don't think he's wanting uh, Walker to go by to watch lines and that type of stuff. So, nope, uh, nope. you know, I, I'm telling you, we know that Walker's strong in the second half of the races and that kind of thing. But let me tell you, the white flag's coming soon. Yeah, big question I got right now. I mean, so far, we've been through the first four rounds. One name that we haven't mentioned hardly any today is... Bryce and Neal. I got to wonder what's going on with that coastal rider right now. You got to wonder if maybe something happened to him there on that first lap. Remember, I talked about there's some tight situations out there. Maybe he clipped the tree. Uh, there could be a number of reasons why he is. You know, 
He's you know, back in the number six spot. But he's in sixth place, Rodney. <laughs> you know, we're talking I, like sixth place is a horrible place to be, but look who he's racing with. There's five guys ahead of him that can win, and he can win. So sixth place really isn't that bad if you really look at it. But on paper, it might, but it's not. And that's the weight that comes with it now, you know. Yeah. A uh, couple great performances, get the wins going and get that stuff happening, and all of a sudden sixth place seems like kind of dreary, you know. But like you said, man, we're, we're talking about Chris Borsch, uh, Adam McGill, Walker Fowler, all these guys. So uh, sixth place, I don't, I don't think that's a downside really. But Literally the best in the world in the woods on four wheels are these guys right here. And uh, you, my friends, have got a special treat, whether you're here trackside today or you're watching along the World Wide Web. And, racertv.com you are witnessing uh, the best of the best period well i'll tell you what it is uh, lap three that we're working on we're an hour and nearly 10 minutes into this race adam mcgill leads walker fowler cole richardson chris borch jerry mcclure your top five gncc live continues after this when it comes to protecting your engine amsoil offers the next level performance truck owners demand Amsoil provides 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard, extending the life of pistons and cams. Give the vehicle you love the above and beyond fortification it deserves. Amsoil, devoted to protection. Maxis Tires. Here at Rocky Mountain ATV MC, our goal has always been to get you the best price and provide quality service. Now, we're giving you one more reason to shop with Rocky Mountain. We call it Quick Cash. It's simple to get. Just place an order with a qualifying Quick Cash item and get cash to spend on your next order. Try it out today. RockyMountainATVMC.com Get ready. The Andersons discovered life is easier with an Outlaw RV. The Outlaw is a complete home on wheels with a multifunctional garage. Getting on the road has never been quicker. The Outlaw is made to fit the lifestyle of today's active families. So stop roughing it and start enjoying your weekends. Find the Thor Motor Coach Outlaw that fits your needs at GarageRVs.com today. I'm a sore loser. I'm a sore loser. Losing is not an option for me. Be the best. The best. The best. You have to have the best equipment under the hood. That's why I, I only use Cometic products in my engines. Cometic gasket. Cometic gasket. Cometic gasket. <laughs> Cometic Gasket, a superior quality gasket for those of us who demand the highest level of performance. And welcome back to GNCC Live. How do you? Hashtag GNCC Live with this little girl right here watches on her little uh, four-wheeler there. That is uh, TJ Warren, 080910, Jess Webster 627 JC is cheering on local Chris Borch. There's one There's of our boys. There's a bandit. <laughs> She's no fair weather friend. She's she's there cheering them. And look at that. She's got one of those Moto T, one of those blankets you can get at Moto T's, one of those GNCC blankets. That's pretty cool, man. That's that a is. that's a real fan right there. And I bet you she'd love to have uh, love to have her a t-shirt. Now these aren't necessarily the winners, folks. These are just uh, the ones that we're receiving right now. But that looks pretty cool, man. She's true she GNCC. Got the GNCC blanket, got the quad, got the laptop up. And don't forget, tweet your podium prediction finishes or podium finish predictions, I should say. Hashtag those GNCC live on your Twitter account. And of course, uh, you could have a chance to win $250. Do you want to let, uh, in, in Amsoil product, do you want to let you know too, you don't have to be right. You just got to get it in and get it hashtag GNCC live for an opportunity to win. Well, last check we had, Adam McGill, Walker Fowler, Cole Richardson, Chris Borch, Jared McClure were your top five. Bryson Neal was running sixth. He was right there in the thick of things with Jared McClure, but um, not real sure where things are going for the number five right now. Landon Wolf in uh, 
sixth place or seventh place, Jay Sadron is eighth, Josh Merritt ninth, and Johnny Gallagher rounding out the top ten. You know, Adam McGill out there uh, doing it for the CST tire folks. You know, he mentioned that last week. He uh, uh, at, at he was looking forward to this particular race right here. There's no doubt about it. And uh, to get that win was a huge, huge accomplishment for him because that's exactly what he needed to get the ball rolling. And we had a chance to talk with him what that was like and get that win finally. I felt really good. Uh, it felt it was real nice to be able to get the first one out of the way. Uh, this one should definitely come a little easier. It's a CST round coming into this uh, this race and being a CST sponsored guy on an ATV should make it that much easier. The track should be just perfect for these tires all day long. It was definitely a good feeling. We pushed all day long. I really didn't think we was going to be able to run him down. I mean, 35 seconds is a big gap, especially to push uh, in one lap to be able to catch somebody like that. So for us to be able to do that, especially on a you know an old outdated Honda, it was a pretty cool feeling. But uh, you know, when we was able to do it, make the pass, it was. It was like almost like a sigh of relief, like, you know, being 29 years old, yeah, we could still knock out some wins every now and then. So that was, it was a nice little confidence boost for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, he might have talked about outdated. I think what he meant by that was it's been a while since Honda's actually produced a new machine. But the it's sad news broke, is, it. yeah, that's it. Don't broke. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, guess what? Honda has just announced, I think they're actually stopping production of that bike. That's, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, what they can get. yeah. Dealers are getting what they can on those machines. I hope that means that that could herald the coming of something new in the future. You never know. Keep my fingers crossed. TRX 500. <laughs> TRX 500 could have a thousand CCs of uh, Honda power there. No, I'm just kidding. You but know, and, uh, as Adam McGill talked about, a 30-second lead. Didn't know if he yeah. could catch up to him the last lap. I mean, that's <laughs> GNCC racing. Anything can happen. You know, we got 12 miles of racing going out there. You could catch a lap rider. You could catch a tree. You could get stuck. So there's so many different things that could happen on a on a lap. So it's the never give up attitude that helped Adam McGill get that lead, get that win last weekend too. You know, he kept on pushing even though it was 30 seconds. He thought, oh, I can't do it, but he just kept on pushing and pushing and you know, and luck was his way that day, and he ended up winning that race, and it's carrying over in today. But now. He's got Walker Fowler doing that to him. Walker Fowler's caught up to Adam McGill within eight seconds of him, or maybe even closer now. I'm not sure, but Four seconds. you know that Adam McGill can feel the heat of Walker Fowler. So now, you know, his head's starting to spin a little bit, thinking, oh, shoot, Walker Fowler has caught me. I really got to focus on what I'm doing, and you know, I got one more lap to go. I need to put my head down and focus, focus, focus. Thanks for reeling us back in. You're absolutely right, uh, Fred. That is uh, a, a great way to look at that, and... Uh, I think you're right. I mean, we just got to watch. We're at a, basically a waiting game right now. I think uh, uh, is Adam uh, starting to fade at the end of the race? I, I don't think that's the case. I think he's just kind of paced. I think what Walker Fowler's doing, he's starting to pick up the pace. And if that's the case, um, I think that, uh, honestly, I believe that uh, Adam's got something left in the tank, too. We, we could see an old school finish, kind of similar to what we saw well, a little bit last week and some of the uh, good finishes that we saw there last year between uh, Walker and uh, Adam McGill as well. I will promise you Adam McGill's not tired right now. Uh, like we said, he doesn't talk a lot about the training, doesn't make a big issue out of it. Uh, as a matter of fact, probably prefers uh, people to think that he doesn't do a lot of physical oh, yeah, training and sure. that kind of thing, you know. But uh, I can tell you that guy's fit, that guy's strong. When we talked to him two weeks ago uh, after the win, I said, man, Adam, you look like you got plenty left in the tank. He said, I had another hour. You know, so that gives you an indication uh, of what's going on there. And, and one thing that happens, Rodney, you mentioned, is Walker going faster? Did Adam slow down? Uh, yeah, Walker uh, is picking up the pace a little bit, but we didn't necessarily see Adam drop his pace. Right, exactly. So when, when we get knobby to knobby or that white flag comes out, then the story will be told with Adam McGill. I think you're absolutely you know, right about that. I think. And if uh, you look at the lap times, you know, last lap around, they were one second difference. Yeah, so identical lap. I times. mean, when you're going that fast and that close, I mean, yeah, he was eight seconds and now he's six. Two seconds is nothing. You know, it could have been a little miss, a miss, overshot a turn, caught a tree, missed a root, caught a lapper. So, if they come by again and they're six seconds apart, well, we know that they're both going as fast as they can go, and it was just you know an element out there that made it be like that exactly and that's how you gauge that you know you watch the differences we see if they stay the same but 10 seconds to four seconds just like Fred said 
blow that silt turn and you lost four seconds getting the RPM back up to speed, getting the ground speed up, or fighting off the guy right behind you. So now you've lost that forward momentum. You're not thinking about the guy ahead of you. Now you're thinking about the guy behind you. So four, six seconds, nothing to overcome. No, it's not, and it happens very quickly, like you said. I'm sitting here, and I'm looking uh, right now. Um, lap times, 27-24 for McGill, 27-25 for Walker Fowler. How they incredible is that, Rodney? 20, 12 One second. Sec 12 seconds faster than the next fastest person on the track right now, believe it or not. And that's per lap. That's lap time. Yeah. That's not a gap. That's not a deficit. That's not a margin. We're telling you, 12 seconds per lap. Yeah. That's amazing when you're talking about the fastest quad riders in America. Well, right now, that uh, rider back in the number three spot, 35 seconds back. Cole Richards. Uh, uh, oh, there's Adam this, McGill right now, and Walker Fowler is all over him like a cheap suit, Rodney. Oh, that ain't even a half second. They were side by side, and uh, literally it looked like Walker was trying to make that pass, but uh, CST tires hooking up for uh, Adam McGill. That CST tires caught mouth corner. He was able to uh, <laughs> keep things alive. And, yeah, that's what the name of that turn Well, where'd Walker Fowler Whoa, go? Walker, Walker Fowler has disappeared. Uh, he overshot that berm right there or something. I think he's going now, but I think he, when Adam McGill went wow. in there and hit that big old dust berm, Walker Fowler couldn't see the turn, and he went right on through it. Mercy sakes alive. He kind of disappeared in that dust plume. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Adam McGill did that big dust burn. Walker Fowler was, was right on him for sure, Rodney, but he definitely overshot the turn or messed up there. Or he high-centered the silt thing like Cole Richardson did a lap ago, but Adam McGill has put a little <laughs> bit of time back on him. Look at this. We, I think we got, I think now, four riders about to start duking it out right here at the hour and 20-minute mark for the third-place position, talking about Cole Train, Cole Richardson, Chris Borch, Jared McClure, and is that Landon Wolf back there also? Perfect example of what we oh, just... Neil. Bryson Neal, that's right. Perfect example of what we just talked about. Ten seconds turn into four seconds, overshooting a turn possibly. My goodness, these guys were wheel-to-wheel. -wheel. They were side-by-side. -side. Walker trying to make the pass. Adam able to keep him at bay. And you know what, Fred? As we mentioned, one silty turn changed the whole game. Yep, sure did. You know, Walker Fowler was right on him. He lost a bunch of time right there. But now the next thing is we've got third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Those guys are neck and neck trying to get that final spot on the podium. And they now have new life. They saw that mistake out of Walker. They could sense it. They could feel it. And now uh, all of a sudden they have a little shot in the arm, a little boost energy, and a little more motivation to get up there and try to get one more spot. An exciting thing is we're not even to the white flag yet. These guys have got, <laughs> <laughs> these guys have got about 11-mile markers, so they got a few more miles yet to go before they even get to the finish line. So when they get to the finish line, they're going to say, this is it. It's now or never. <laughs> Let me tell you, we say it all the time, especially in the morning races, you know, anything can and will normally happens on that last lap. It is so true. You know, we sound like a broken, I sound like a broken record week in and week out. But I can tell you, I can list exactly what's happened on that last lap, Fred, for the last year and a half. And you know what? It's always something happening. It may be for second place, not necessarily the win. But I can tell you, somebody's putting their best foot forward on the white flag lap. Oh, yeah. You know, you've, you've worked all, hard all week long to put yourself in this position. So if you're in fifth or sixth and, you, and you're right there in that group, you know you need to be in the front. You're going to let that last lap's going to mean a lot to you. You know, you've worked, like I said, hard all week. You got one, one more lap to go. You got all week to rest. So give it everything you got. You come in off the finish line, you fall on the ground, knowing you did your best, gave it your all. That's all you can ask for. Fred, I watched you race all over the country. I watched you race off-road. I watched you race motocross. And I can tell you this much. It didn't matter if it was Jeff Stanton. It didn't matter if it was Guy Cooper. It didn't matter if it was Rodney Smith. Let me tell you what Fred Andrews did. Fred Andrews stayed focused. He kept the game plan in action. You were never rattled, Fred, and it doesn't matter. I watched some of the best riders in the world rub your leg. I watched you get ahead of many of these riders, beat many of the best riders in the world. But one thing about it, the game plan never varied for Fred Andrews. No, you know, these guys all put their pants on the same way uh, I did. I, they were no better than me, the, but I wasn't letting them by, you know. I worked hard all week long, too. I had to eat. I had to pay for my family for food, so they want to get around me, they can, but I'm going as fast as I can go to he, keep them behind me. and Fowler have checked in, guys. Sorry to interrupt. 28 minutes, point six seven two. so call it 28 minutes flat for Adam McGill. 27.53 flat, zero, zero, zero. For Walker Fowler, that was seven seconds faster. It says two-tenths of a second. Our white flag, I believe, is out right now. So those guys have checked in with uh, lap three complete. They had a 35-second lead over Cole Richardson. Now the uh, train with uh, Richardson, 
Boric, McClure, and Neal. The four rider shootout for that third place position right now. We'll be keeping an eye out for that to see how that is going to unfold right there. It's only lap three. Wouldn't it be lap? What's that? No, I'm, I'm just, I'm wrong. Yeah, it should be lap four. Yeah, it is. They just yep. completed lap three. Yep. That's what that's saying. So we're on, oh, you're on the screen. We are on lap four. On that, lap three complete. That's what they got, 28 minutes, point six on that. Uh, look at this. Richardson losing, wow, another 30 seconds, or actually 20 seconds, uh, 54.5 seconds back now to the third place position. Chris Borch was eight tenths of a second behind him. Bryson Neal up to fifth, four tenths of a second behind Borch, and McClure had dropped five seconds back into the number six spot. Big changes taking place. Yeah, as place you can there. see, Adam McGill and Walker Fowler are really, really on the gas right now. They're almost a minute ahead of third place position, Cole Richardson. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing how fast these two are together. And it's going to be interesting to see here. It looks like Walker Fowler, you know, he lost some time. He's like seven seconds behind him. But we'll see if Walker Fowler can catch up to him here at the two mile marker when they come out here to the motocross section. Yeah, this will be an interesting last lap of racing. I don't know. I mean, to look at the big picture, you know, we were talking about lap traffic and things, but uh, 120 riders, I think, is about all we had in this afternoon's affair, which is not a large amount of riders. I think a lot of folks were thinking, uh, what do we want to go to South Carolina twice for? Now that anybody that heard or seen a picture or talked to anybody here is kicking themselves in the butt because this, this is a must-attend race, I'm telling you right here. This is one that people are going to uh, wish that they'd made it to. This is one that people are going to be saying for years, why did I not choose to go to that particular? I promise you, you're really going to kick yourself in the tail for Yeah, wait till next here. year. Wait till next year and see how many people are here. Be Always. more than 120 for sure because <laughs> this facility, it's a new place. Everybody was a little bit leery maybe. I don't know, but they should know that GNCC is not going to go to a place that's not going to put on a good event. It's not, you know, we're going to come to a place we want all our people to like the track so they all come back. <laughs> you know, we're not going to put you in some place you aren't going to like. So next time we do a new brand new facility, man, come on. I could just hear some of those, no, honey, <laughs> we're not going to go to that Camp Coker. Why do we want to do that? It's just some little motocross track. You know, we'll, we'll pick up one of the other races someplace else that's cooler. <laughs> <laughs> you come Wrong! Here. Big giant ponds, big grass fields, oh, all this beautiful scenery. This I mean, plenty of level parking. There's, you asked for it, this place has this got it. This is a picture X facility, there's no doubt about it. I mean, we, we have the luxuries of a There's GNCC. Adam McGill right there coming across the motocross section, and Walker yeah. Fowler's right on his tail. So we wow. got a second, half a second, and it's, uh, it's getting interesting right now, folks. Glad you could see this on TV with us, and they're coming to the rollers right now. Will Adam McGill be rolling them or jumping them, and Walker Fowler's going to be jumping them, and... There wow, you go. They're both just pouring the coals to it. Yeah, you think that they rode motocross the way they're going. Oh, through. Walker Fowler almost tips over right there. Went on a little different line. Went outside of the main berm trying to get some some traction there. It looks like he hooked up That's a little bit twice. too good. And just about did a number Walker Fowler barrel roll. But uh, he's back on it, and he's got a little bit of time to make up here on Adam McGill right now to well, you know, he's exerting a lot of energy. He may be making those mistakes, falling back and catching back up, but there's got to be a lot of energy being exerted by Walker Fowler right now. Yeah, but Walker Fowler knows it's now or never, man. It's this big open areas right now. He knows he's got to get around Adam McGill, and he's going to do whatever it takes. Walker Fowler, talk about a guy working hard. That guy trains hard all week long, just like Adam McGill. So this wow, little bit of energy. Was that dust or was that smoke? <laughs> You it know, looked like white smoke coming up there for a second, but it wasn't. Uh, there they are. Uh, is this that big double they're coming up to? Yeah. Ooh, look at that, man. Walker looks Walker so Fowler squares her up on him. Adrenaline, reflex, instinct, whatever you guys call it, the last lap brings out everything, and it doesn't matter if these guys are running on reserve, okay? Let me tell you something. They're going to give 110, 110% on this final lap, and, you know, many times we've watched these guys come in and fall off the quad, literally, yep. you know? Uh, exhausted, totally spent, but that's the importance of this last lap, and that's what this last lap brings out in GNCC racing. You know something I noticed about Walker Fowler there on the motocross track? He was never following Adam McGill. He's you outside, inside. That. He was. If Adam would have bobbled, boom, he would have pounced on him. So that I was, uh, that. There was, that was pretty cool. That was. That was uh, good line choices by not doing that for Walker. And Cole Richardson just went by, not to interrupt your riding. And here comes, he's got a little bit of lead now on Chris Borich. Big break for him there. There's McClure behind. And Jared Borch McClure now. coming up behind Chris Borch now. There's Neal, Bryson Neal. He's still holding on to a, uh, I believe now the fifth place position. 
or not. Let's see. No, that's Three, six. Four. Yep, six. It's still six because McClure is up to the number five spot. Chris Borch, he did, didn't do the double again that lap, and there's Jared McClure doing the double. The Snake's trying to get the uh, old yeller, trying to get a bite out of him. I, I got to say that, that Chris has missed uh, th uh, the uh, setup on this one again, so... But he's doing good by uh, keeping uh, close to a podium position finish regardless. But uh, like I was saying there a few moments ago about Camp Coke, I just want folks to know we are probably one of the most blessed race series in the world to be able to go to the places and the venues that we go to. We just went Union, South Carolina, the Big Buck. That was a great and beautiful place. This is a great and beautiful place. Uh, we uh, been to Morganton, North Carolina, Steel Creek. Beautiful new uh, race down there in Georgia. The the where we go down there to Hogwaller for the uh, for the opening round this year. Just another amazing race, and and even the, the the upcoming race. I mean, Limestone's got some pretty cool things about it coming up. But you know, you're looking ahead. You got uh, Snowshoe GNCC coming up before the summer break. That's going to be pretty big and pretty monumental, and that's going to be one that I think everybody's going to be wanting to come to. And uh, you know, we got the season that to close it all out with. Uh, you got Unadilla. Uh, premier place to go check out. Uh, Powerline Park is, I mean, it, uh, that right there, that, it's a park. And it's like a big kid's playground is what that basically boils down to. Another premier facility we go to. Uh, and, and obviously the Ironman GNCC, when we wrap that bad boy up, it is amazing, amazing uh, place to, to go racing in an amazing facility. And even more amazing now as uh, we've got motocross racing going on there, that big new uh, outdoor pro motocross national track. And next weekend, we will be going to uh, Ironman Raceway for the uh, Pro X Racing Parts ATV Motocross National Championship. It's going to be exciting. That is going to be round three for the amateurs, round four for the pros as we approach the halfway point of that season for those guys, too. Rodney, you talk about these venues, you talk about these facilities. As uh, soon as I saw the boss uh, there th this morning, we talked about this uh, facility. And, you know, it really exemplifies what GNCC racing is all about, finding the best terrain, finding the best places to spectate, finding the best opportunities for our GNCC race and nation to get together and have an event. And that's why people travel every week from Texas. They travel every week from New Mexico. They travel every week from the Keys in Florida. You know, not easy trip, but you know what? It's the best racing in the country, and that's what they want to be involved with. And that's the reputation that GNCC has earned over the last 25 years. So when you talk about places like the Ironman and now Co Camp Coker, this is what people expect when they're associated with GNCC racing. Oh, instant classic right here, man. I mean, when you've said Ironman and Camp Coker, for some reason it sounded like we've been, right. you know, this is a cla an instant classic. Uh, this. Uh, facility, this event, uh, the all new uh, terrain that these guys are going through right now, obviously a, a bit of a challenge, but you know, even though it hasn't offered up uh, the uh, wackiness and craziness that I kind of expected it to, Fred, uh, this has certainly afforded us, I think, a, a very good look at good racing and maybe a good look again at what we're seeing transition and what maybe this next part of the season is about to see because uh, Adam Gill finally found his stride out there and so is Cole Richardson. We're seeing a couple new players up there into the thick of things. Yeah, Rodney too, and I think, you know, these guys are kind of maybe settled down a little bit. You know, you said about something exciting happening. We've had awesome racing going on. It's just nobody's really making big mistakes. You know, everybody's got in that groove and they're all going fast and they're all going good you know right now you gotta make sure you got some good finishes and and these guys are really putting themselves in the right position to win you know it's a long way from being over we're still got over half the race half a lap left to go yeah so hey, you know walker quick. fowler keeps them going in and out trying to pass and we got that group behind them all together so it's it's all, right. all good racing yeah and uh, speaking of which, I want to look into some of these other classes real quick. I also want to throw out there one more time. Get your Instagram out there. Uh, we want to see some of those. I think we'll be showing some more here in a few minutes. But uh, let's take a look at some of these uh, classes, the way they're breaking down right now. Uh, Wesley Wolf leading the XC2 Pro-Am class. He's ninth overall right now. He's got a minute and 22-second lead over Randy Hamilton. Greg Covert running back in the number three spot. Matt Lindo, who got the whole shot, is fourth. And Cody Collier back in the number five spot. I got to think that Collier must be having some sort of an issue right there, to be honest with you. College A class, Brandon Eichert is your number one ride. Drew Landers in the number two spot. Tyler Wares is third. Hunter Hart, whom we've seen by for 
top amateur uh, positions and wins in this uh, College A class is back and forth. Tanner Walker rounds out the top five there. You got Braden Schick in sixth. Uh, Seth Wilson is eighth. White Wilkin in actually White Wilkin is eighth. Wilson was seventh. Logan Wagaman is ninth, and Peyton Adkins rounds out your top ten. So we go next to uh, College B. This is uh, Coastal S and J 808. I think that's supposed to be Eli Kiger. Uh, Eli Kiger is your Coastal S and J. I think they got their transponder mixed up with their UTV transponder. But anyway. Uh, that's Eli Kiger out front. Uh, Travis Spencer, a minute and 30 seconds back in second. Frankie Egress is third place. Morgan Flannery, the 232 in fourth. In fifth place, Chandler Burner. In sixth place, Bobby Duker. Seventh spot is uh, Scott Pearson. Eighth, Shane Pitzer. Corey Vandeliner is ninth. And Tyler Swindle rounds out your top ten. Looking at the junior eight, 22 plus class now. Jeff Miller, Nick Mastrolangelo, eight seconds separating the two. Another 15 and a half back to Steve Covert, the number 29 and third. Josh Konachek is fourth. Travis Austin, a 114 and fifth. Jake Price is sixth. Michael McAvoy in seventh. Nathan Hornacek in eighth. Dustin Pickett, ninth. Cody Wolford rounds out your top 10. Junior B, 22 post class, we take a look at next. Charlie Dawson, your leader there. A minute and eight seconds over Chris Ballou. Brian Felicki, who I think got the early lead in that, is running third. David Kite in fourth place. Ryan Bogus is fifth. Jay uh, Callan, Callan is sixth. Christopher Wittenberger in seventh. Doug Morse in eighth. Matthew Scott in ninth. And Evan Temko rounds out your top ten. Looking next to the Bet A class. Jeff Pickens, big Papa P, as we like to call him. Former uh, XC1 Pro class rider. And leading A.J. Koontz, former XC2 Pro Am rider. About 28 seconds over him. Joey Margaria is running in third. Wesley Stone is fourth. Nick Camilli in fifth. Todd Muscala is running sixth. Luke Reeves in seventh. Eighth is Walter Schumacher. Ninth is Kenneth Kelly and Dustin Hendershot. Is around top ten. There is your leaders. And look at that nose to tail right now at the six mile marker. Fred Andrews says Adam McGill is doing all that he can to keep it in at least this scenario rather than let the number one get around him right now. I know, Rod, you saw that. And did you see those guys come in that turn? The first lap when they came through, this was nice flat ground. Them guys just blew right through there. You <laughs> see that? Adam McGill almost got stuck on those roots right there. And Walker Fowler maybe even gave him a little nudge to get him going right there. These yeah. guys, this track is changing. It's getting rougher and rougher. And Walker Fowler's, Walker Fowler's on it. He is. Fowler's on fire again, quite possibly. We heard that a lot and saw that a lot. Well, but Adam fan. McGill's riding a wide quad right now, you know, so he's not going to let him by. It's going to be a fight the whole way to the it finish. Will it will no, certainly be. And you're right about the track, uh, what it looks like now by comparison to uh, lap one. But uh, there you go. Uh, continuing with some of these um, results, there's third and fourth. The epic battle for third place right now. That is third, uh, fourth, fifth. Cole Richardson, Chris Borich, Jake uh, Jared McClure and I believe that was Bryson Neal back in the sixth place position. Oh, There's what Neal happened to Neal? There's a lot of, is that lap traffic between him and that fifth place position he's got see that's what i expected to see happening earlier but since there's not as many on the track that might be the saving grace of what i was looking for to be happening out there today <laughs> and you can see it's already separated Bryson from that pack and that can change things. Now, if that happens again, if these front runners get up there and somebody gets in between uh, Walker and uh, and Adam, who knows what's going to happen there. Corey Blinkowitz, uh, Jason Dillard, Philip Thayer, one, two, and three in the uh, Bet B 30 plus class. Jeremy Gouchard is fourth. John Colvin in fifth. Matt Miller is sixth. Chris Bennett in seventh. William Craig is eighth. Charlie Rogers, ninth. Alan Tuttle rounds out your top. Senior A-B class, Mark Batson, the, the uh, media all-stars writer out there with us. Rusty Repass actually got the whole shot in that class. Jeff Range is second, or excuse me, third. Lane Coyle, who does double duty nowadays in both the woods and on the moto track every once in a while. He's running in fourth. Charles Baker in fifth. Andy Cooper is sixth. And Eugene Siemens rounds out the seventh. And that's your uh, look here. Uh, well past the halfway point, but it's certainly in the halfway push. There is the 11 machine we see going by. That's the nine machine of Jay Shadron. Still some of our uh, top ATV XC1 pros as uh, Landon Wolf's running seventh, Jay Shadron back in eighth. Wesley Wolf is uh, ninth place. He's leading the XC2 Pro-Am class, and Josh Merritt rounds out your top ten. GNCC Live will be back to Camp Coker right after this. When it comes to guarding your engine, Amsoil offers the next-level performance enthusiast demand. 
Amsoil provides 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard, extending the life of pistons and cams. Give the vehicle you love the above and beyond protection it deserves. Amsoil, devoted to protection. Maxis Tires. CST Tires. You smell it, you feel it, you can right. taste it in the air. Speed, man. Full wide open. Blast. I don't really like high school too much. Too booky, too take notes, learn this, and that's it. Yeah, wow, take that full-size motorcycle. The feeling of taking them apart every day, putting them back together. Yeah. Can't explain it. Everything I learned applies to now. Seeing your motorcycle that you put together right around the track at 180 miles an hour. Oh, definitely rewarding. My name's Mike. My school's Wyotech. Get on the fast track to a career turn pro at Wyatech. I've been with Liat for a lot of years, and I know the dedication they have for, for safety. When they told me they were coming out with a helmet, I signed right up. Welcome back to GNCC Live. Some highlights from last year's Ironman ATV Motocross National where you're going to see the world's premier amateur and professional racers taken to the track there next uh, Saturday at uh, Ironman Raceway. And then Sunday will be championship crowning day for all of our amateur riders as well as uh, the Pro-Am class. I'm telling you, if you're anywhere close by, you like good racing, come watch that race. You're really going to enjoy it. If not, be sure and tune in to GNs, or excuse me, to racertv.com for ATVMX Live. Uh, that'll be next Saturday. Uh, that'll be around the 1, 2 o'clock time frame there. And then, of course, the following Saturday and Sunday, we'll be back live with the Limestone 100 GNCC Saturday and Sunday. But also, don't forget, coming up this evening, after today's uh, ATV race, we got UTV racing. The side by side is going to be taken to the track. And I know there are a lot of guys here, a lot of excited guys for that particular event. Yeah, right now I was walking through the pit area, down where all the UTVs are pitting, and it seems like we get more and more every round. <laughs> I know. It looks, uh, I mean, the, the pits is just amazing. I mean, this, it looks like everybody here is on a professional race team, the way that it's all laid out and everything. I got to say, kudos to the GNCC Race and Nation itself. Uh, I don't know if it's them or it's the facility that's bringing out the best in them or we bringing out the best in the facility, but whatever the case may be, this has been a great union here, I think, in marriage as far as off-road racing and this piece of property. And I really hope it's something that we can see a lot more of in the future. Right now, speaking of the future, we try to look into our crystal ball and try to figure out how this is all going to unfold. McGill with Walker Fowler all over his rear wheel. I mean, you got to think it's been a while if you look at the calendar, at least six months since we've seen something like this actually take place, Fred. I mean, it's been a while since Walker Fowler and, and Chris Borch have, uh, or not Chris Borch, but uh, Adam McGill have gone at it like they are right now. Yeah. You know, and usually it was Walker Fowler ahead of Adam McGill. So right now, Adam McGill's in the driver's seat. You know, uh, as you can see from what we saw on the TV there, Walker Fowler's trying everything he can. In order to get by somebody, you can't follow them. And Walker Fowler showing you that on the motocross track. He was going in all different lines that Walker Fowler was trying to get around yeah, Adam it, McGill. It you know, was. he was going all over the place. But now in the woods here, there's only that one main line. Since we haven't been here that much, there's not that many lines where people can pull off and move out of your way. So it would only take one rider for those guys to catch up to. I mean, they're already nose to tail, so they really can't get much closer. But <laughs> that could screw with Adam McGill's head a little bit. That could lose his momentum or lose his concentration thinking, oh, no, I just caught this lapper. Which way is Walker going to go? Instead of thinking about himself going forward, now he's worrying about where Walker might punch through some of this foliage to get around him. That's right. He's in the same scenario as Bryce Neal was a couple of weeks ago at the Big Buck where Adam McGill stole the win away. Yeah. 
steal it, uh, take it, however you want to put it. But anyway, he, he got the win there at Big Buck. And right now, uh, Walker Fowler's in a little better position than what even Adam was at this juncture in the race. Yeah, and you know, too, the next section we should see him should be some of them big open fields. So we'll be able to get a good judge on where they're at, you know, if Walker Fowler's still right on him. And you will see that same corner where Walker Fowler tried to make that pass last time, and he messed up and lost a bunch of time. So the CST, you know, it's funny because Adam McGill said, I won this weekend, but I want to win the next race because it's a CS CST race. Yep. So right now, he's four-mile mark. He's close to doing what he wanted to do, putting CST on top of the box. He most certainly is. He's in the process of about to make that happen as we approach the CST tires cottonmouth turn. A lot of wildlife down here. We've had everything from we've seen uh, – uh, about three, four, five different breeds of snakes uh, around the area. It's not like it's over inundated with it, and you gotta be all freaked out about everywhere you go. But there's nature here, you know what yep. I mean? So uh, it's a hunting preserve. It's, it there's is. There's bound to be animals here. Oh yeah, and uh, I think folks are really uh, enjoying it. I mean, and a fishing lot. I've too, never seen So many fishing poles. Yeah, everybody. There was a fishing tournament going on here. When I looked on the on Friday on my way down here, people were putting posts up saying how you know, oh, this is great, this is that. Bring your fishing pole, bring your fishing pole, and there's just <laughs> plenty of places to fish. Yeah, a lot of people did. Yeah, I, I mean, saw a bunch of night, people fishing. At night, whenever I would like see how everybody's lined up around these uh, ponds and stuff. Well, they they're even closer and all around and everything. It's like guys are stepping out and sitting right on the front step, fishing into the ponds and stuff. I mean, it's and there's not just one pond. There's like twenty some different lakes around here. Got the swimming hole there. Look at that big rope swim they got. Check this out. The flip with the uh, GoPro on. Who did that for us? Was that you, Price? <laughs> some random dude that would be something that i think that price would do but look at that i mean just utterly you can come here at camp you got lakefront property yeah i want to buy a piece of property i want to <laughs> buy i want to buy a place to build a house down here <laughs> oh yeah it's kind of just like big buck man there's so many beautiful spots down here and and speaking of which building a house they've got lodging everywhere here i mean there's all kinds of places to go lodging different uh, areas like and you're right it is a lot like big buck just a beautiful wildlife area good Rural South Carolina is what it is. And I stopped and got gas at the gas station on the way here, and the people are like, hey, are you here for the motorcycle race? And they're excited to have us here, and that's what's neat about the community. You know, they're excited to have people here, you know, spending our money in their little gas station, you know, buying a chicken biscuit for breakfast or whatever we're buying from them. So they really appreciate us being here too. Yes, for sure. Down here in the heart of the South, South Carolina's Camp Coker Bullet GNCC, we're located on the Marie Sportsman Reserve and the old home site, as we said, of Camp Coker Motocross, uh, a, a place where legendary motorcycle racers and races have taken place here over the years. And now the motorsports and off-road racing world gets a chance to call Camp Coker home again. And uh, I, I hope this is just the first of many There's visits. our camera guy, Rodney, so the leaders might be coming through here. Yep, that was our NBC Sports camera guy making his uh, adjustments on the trail out there. I think it might have been Brian Risch, if I'm not mistaken. Brian Risch uh, out of Grove City, Pennsylvania has been a, a uh, big camp, been a great uh, part of the, the uh, camera team since we started doing this in-house, probably about 2005, 2006. He's been a part of it, him and Mike Holbert and a few other guys just going out and Getting the shots that nobody else literally can get, man. They go in that some deep, deep places down in there. And we want to salute those guys and be sure you check out NBC Sports for the upcoming uh, broadcast schedule of our condensed versions of uh, the uh, GNCC Racing. I know uh, Jason Wygant hosts those. Uh, we got a new producer for it this year. And uh, oh, if here comes Adam McGill right here. Looks like he's got Whoa. a little bit of lead on Walker yeah. Fowler. Yeah, maybe four or five seconds. Yep, yep, for sure. And this is going to be a good one to see old Brad Jones put together as far as the uh, TV show is concerned in this one. Got a lot of great elements to throw in this one. I want to send, uh, by the way, best wishes to Brad Jones and his father. I understand his father's under the weather a little bit. And, Brad, uh, we miss you, but uh, we know that uh, you've got more important things to be taken care of. But there, exactly like you say, man, McGill seems to have stretched it out just a little bit. There's a number of different reasons why or how that could have happened, but uh, I guess whenever Walker just freezes and stops like that, <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching the video monitor, it just kind of froze yeah. up there. But uh, 
though no, he's still moving. That was just our our glitch there. But uh, you know that's what happens whenever you get out in the elements like this. We got some long shots that we're trying to do. So I don't know uh, if kudos you know, to the technical. If you notice in that too, right now, I noticed that one of the coastal guys was out there giving Adam McGill the board, letting him know how far ahead is a Walker Fowler. So but I mean, I'm sure and, they would like to see Adam McGill win because that. That keeps that. Yep, well, that keeps one, Walker that, Fowler from getting any more points on exactly, their guys. Exactly, exactly. That's what five points more yep. that he could gain if he was to get around. So, uh, with Adam McGill right there, that is actually the best place he could be for Bryson Neal, unless something happens, he goes further back. But uh, he doesn't. Uh, that team don't want to see him go up front because that's five more points that'll s separate. And what we uh, calculate that out at 17 points. So it'll be uh, a little more than that today at the end of this one. But and that looks uh, like right there looks like Bryson Neal going through the infield section yep. here. I'm not sure what place he's in because we didn't get the camera on him to see who came through yet. But well, he was running fifth. Remember, uh, well, six. He got behind McClure and Borich and uh, Richardson and McClure were battling for that uh, final transfer or that final podium spot, I should say. Yeah, but last time we saw him, he, he got caught behind those lap riders. riders yeah. And back in that wood section like that, you get caught behind him. See, that's what Some I'm leaders about. can I mean, get going. You get that little separation right there. You see what, what happened. I knew that was that was that might be one of the surprises I was talking about. Maybe one of the unexpected things. This is have Bryson Neal so far back, not only in positions, now time because we typically see him up cl way closer to the front of the pack at this juncture in the race and pushing. But, again, things are different today. McGill. Leading Fowler, Richardson in third, Borch and McClure round out your top five. Again, where we were watching Richardson, Borch, and McClure in a heated battle for that number three position. And right now, I'm kind of wondering uh, when and where Wesley Wolf's going to be checking in, the leader of the XC2 Pro-Am class. Again, did I, did I say, I think it was a minute. 14 seconds at last check. Let's see where they are right now over the second place in the XC2 Pro Am. One minute, 22 seconds over Randy Hamilton. So that's where I think he was when we checked there a moment ago. So 122. And it doesn't matter if it's one or 122, but Wesley Wolf is up there and he's running currently ninth place overall. Is that some of our Pro Am riders right there? Well, well, let's see here. Let's look at this a little bit more. I know we got a lot of riders looking like a lot of different riders on the course. Oh, wow. We just got it. Didn't even realize it, but look at that. Adam McGill makes it two in a row, folks. I We lost the camera down at the finish line, and I didn't expect those guys to come in. Our timing and scoring it wasn't telling us our gaps and how long. But Adam McGill just checked in with a 28-25 over Walker Fowler's 28-31. He had an 8.4-second lead, and Adam McGill does what he set out to do, win the CST Camp Coker Bullet GNCC, and that makes it two in a row for the Mafia. And that is a big chink in the armor for Walker Fowler, and that saves five points also on Bryson Neal, even though he's having his struggles today back there a little bit. Wow, what an amazing finish to this one sorry we didn't catch that coming in but some minute later this is where we're going to find out what's going on with Richardson Borch and Neil and McClure Borch just checked in in the number three spot 49 wow. seconds down so Chris Borch the old bandit himself we're starting to see it man he's coming back to life bandits you guys better wake up and you guys better be seeing us <laughs> in Indiana a couple weeks get get the get the uh Get Old together. Yeller is back. The Old Yeller is back, and I'm telling back you. Back on the podium. That good ride by Chris Borch. That could have been Richards. We were watching We were watching this field section at the 11 mile marker, trying to sort out whether or not that could have been Cole Richardson, but we've got McClure is in in fourth. Bryson Neal is in in fifth, and Cole Richardson has not checked in yet. So that limping was Cole Richardson there just a moment ago. We were watching, and, and our producer says, I think that's Cole Richardson. That's when we were kind of like, we're a little confused on some of these riders. But I think that was him. I think Richardson had uh, some last lap late race problems, and that looks more mechanical maybe than anything. Hopefully uh, he can uh, limp it around to the finish line. Uh, so we'll be watching. I want to see how Wesley Wolf ends up today, too, because I know there's a lot of ATV motocross fans that are watching right now wondering how their up-and-comer is uh, faring here in the off-road racing world. 
Yeah, Adam McGill, wire to wire win. Yeah, whole shot. Whole shot. To checkers. He never lost. He never relinquished nope. the lead once. He had, if he did, we didn't see it on right. camera. And what we saw was the closest was uh, we saw uh, Walker, Walker Fowler. Walker Fowler up on close, his bumper. Close to that rear times. bumper, but yep. uh, not enough to get around him. So and a great uh, ride by Chris Borch. You know, Chris Borch got, was on the start second and fell back a little bit and then worked his way back up to third place. So that's a great podium finish for him. That's for sure. And, you know, this very well could be the turnaround that he was looking for because you look at the big picture, Chris didn't get a bad start. He got a second place start, but he fell back. But he battled back also, so that's a big, big uh, push forward for Chris Borch and another step in the right direction for the six-time champ and the 73-time race winner, which, again, is the all-time wins record right there. So Chris knows how to win. He's just taking the, the long road to getting there, I guess, is what he's trying to do. But maybe I'm sure he might find a shortcut when we go to round number uh, six here in a couple weeks. And I think, too, Rodney, if looking at the points going on here with Bryson Neal getting in, I think he got sixth place or fifth place, and Adam McGill winning, I think that will put Adam McGill into second overall in the points because he was only three points behind him going into this. Yes, that will then. If you're absolutely right, that is exactly what So we what's could have a new second-place overall rider with uh, Adam McGill. And with Adam McGill right now, we pointed out he was 17 points down. Well, that put him like 12 One, two, check, check. That should yep. put him about 12. Yep. Well, it sounds like Megawatt Matt Watson's ready to go down on the podium. And Matt, uh, looks like uh, good things are going on as far as uh, the uh, inaugural running of the Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. So we'll get down to the podium here in just a few moments. I guess Matt was just checking to make sure it was still check, working. Check, check. Yeah, it's working. Check, check. I check take one, cash, Matt. Check two. <laughs> no checks, cash. No checks, Matt. We Brown want paper cash. bag money. Brown paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just I'm just blown away. Yeah, again, I said expect the unexpected, and uh, we were getting into that point where I was saying, ah, oh, this is kind of like. But look at this. Look at the result. This is kind of an unexpected result turn of events to take place today. So Adam McGill, uh, looks like we're having some technical difficulties down there. And we're going. We're just going to go ahead and wrap things up. We're also going to get the TV crew ready to go for the UTV race coming up here in just a moment. Though you guys down on the podium stick around. We're going to have podium celebration coming your way here in just a few moments on behalf of uh, Fred Andrews, Megawatt Matt Watts, and I'm Rodney Tomlin saying, "Good day, everybody." All right, heading down to the podium right now. Megawatt Matt Watson going to be giving us the uh, call and the lowdown on what's taking place at our podium.